What's up my fellow spiritual weirdo fam on the internet? Welcome back to the channel. If you're new here, my name is Tawny Michelle and we are not all love, light, twin flames, and unicorns over here on this channel, but we do do a lot of cool spiritual astrology and tarot shit over here. So if that is your vibe, make sure to subscribe before you leave. Little disclaimer, I do not ever say that to put anybody else down that is very love, light, twin flames, and unicorns. That is not being shady towards anybody. I've said that for a very long time now so I just want to make that clear I'm not throwing shade if that's what works for you do it because you're a badass and you deserve to do things that make you feel good and happy I just say that as a disclaimer that I not only focus on the light but I also focus on the shadow aspects of life anyways welcome to the October 2021 tarot and astrology sign horoscopes in this video I do a reading and astrology horoscope for each and every sign. Your rising sign will resonate most for your astrology horoscopes, but your sun, moon, and rising can resonate for the tarot readings for your sign. So make sure to check out all of them just in case, but do remember the astrology horoscope will resonate the most for your actual rising sign. And just before we get into it, October is a really hectic and crazy month that leads us into a really hectic and crazy next few months. So I just want to make that clear. A lot of similar themes were coming up in most of the readings. So you'll probably hear a lot of similarities between the readings because October in general is a month of exposing things and showing us things, truths and hidden things. And so that is why you may hear a lot of similar themes if you listen to more than one reading. It's just different in which area of life they're coming up in basically. Also, if you haven't seen my Mercury retrograde video where I talked about the Mercury retrograde that's happening for most of the month of October and what's coming up, go check that out. And if you haven't seen my October 2021 astrology video, go check that out as well because I talk about a lot of the themes that we end up talking about in the readings today. But either way, this month, you will be feeling the chaotic energy in one way or another. And the way that I look at it is, yes, it is chaotic. It's really hard to talk about months like this as an astrologer because it's a lot, you know, it's a lot of stuff. And just when we have some really positive transits, there can also be more challenging transits that follow, but it's going to hit everybody differently. And challenging transits are actually very inspiring and very motivating. I have had some really challenging transits at times, but those were the times where I grew the most and felt the best about myself. So do keep that in mind. It's not always super bad or super scary or super crazy. Like it can also be during those challenging times, really, really inspiring and really motivate you to move forward in a way that you weren't before and to really break you out of some kind of stagnation. So yeah, basically just be aware this month is a little turbulent. I'm sure you'll know because it may be like coming up and uh, spanking you on the ass here and there. It may affect everybody differently. So do keep that in mind. And also remember, these are general readings. So not everybody will resonate. And really quick, before you go and you leave this video, please make sure to give this video a thumbs up, share it with any of your friends, family, anybody that you may think needs to hear their upcoming horoscope and leave me a comment down below and let me know if your reading ends up resonating and please feel free to come back and check in and let me know what happened if things resonated etc because this month is crazy and i would really really love to hear your guys's experiences this month you will see me in different outfits because i filmed all of these over the course of a few days so i will look different in some of the readings the sound may change too because my phone was dying through some of them so i had to use no mic in some of the readings so do keep that in mind but with that being said let's go ahead and get into the october 2021 sign horoscopes what's up my beautiful fellow librans out there libra rising suns or moons welcome to your tarot and astrology horoscope for october happy birthday by the way and i hope that you guys make this the best birthday as possible because you deserve it because you are a badass and you deserve to make your birthday the best birthday even if there's crazy shit going on right like this is about you right now you know you are getting a taste of how to be more assertive mars is in your sign right mars is the complete opposite of you libra mars is about the self it is about the individual not necessarily about others and so 
you are seeing how to assert yourself. You are seeing new ways in which you can be a little bit more in like a leadership role or more ways to move forward instead of wait for others to decide. So you're considering others all the time because that's what your sign does, right? That's what our sign is about. It is about the other, right? The sun does not like to be in Libra. You know what I mean? This is the sun's weakest part is in Libra, also Aquarius. So when you have that in your identity, who you are, you know, the self is actually based on others. What do you think that brings? You know what I mean? Somebody that is always considering others, that is always thinking about how others are perceiving them. Therefore, with Mars and our sign this month, we get a nice break from that, right? We get to worry about the self for once. We get to move forward, charge ahead, and not be so caught up in what others think, what others are saying, what others want, what others need, other people's opinions, other people's thoughts, how other people are feeling, you know? And so this is a month where we are seeing how just how considerate we really are and we're feeling a little bit more like okay i'm ready to move forward we're also noticing though where there are cracks in our foundations where we need to work on certain hard or challenging aspects of ourselves that keep us doing certain cycles over and over and over again where we have these voices in our heads that are telling us this or telling us that or holding us back due to possibly some kind of conditioning or how we grew up or our childhood something along those lines and so this is definitely a time where it's time to face those things right because we have goblins and the goblins card is about those voices in your head those thoughts those things that tell you you can't do this you shouldn't do that you know you should do this this that and the other and so this is a month where we are seeing all of the different aspects of ourselves and how we express those aspects into the world and how those aspects are mirroring back to us uh you know how we express them you know like how they are mirroring things back to us from what's going on inside of us and so this month you may feel the need to have some space to get some space to separate yourself to you know, kind of take some time for yourself because we also have the cave. And I do believe this is once again, your foundation, but also kind of taking a step back, reflecting Mercury retrograde is in our sign. We have a shit fuck ton of stuff in our sign. And so this is a busy month, Libra. This is a really busy month, but you got this, you know, you may, I'm not gonna lie. You may be feeling a little bit on your own this month. You may be feeling a little bit on your own. You may be feeling like, oh, okay, it feels like I'm doing this on my own or it feels like no one understands or whatever the case may be, you're gonna be really seeing just how much other people's opinion of you dictates your own actions, your reactions and who you are, okay? And it's coming to a bo boiling point, Libra. I think at some point this month, you're gonna get over it. You are gonna get over this balancing act walking this thin ass line that is keeping you stuck in the mud and that is getting you nowhere, right? You're hitting a certain level of a rock bottom this month with yourself that then ends up getting giving lead way to you breaking free, breaking out of your comfort zone, liberating yourself. It's like you're pulling the whole foundation down because you're sick of the cracks constantly seeping through. And you want the golden palace, baby. You know what I mean? You want the golden palace and you deserve the golden palace, okay? You're sick of this chaos, you want this. And that could be metaphorically speaking or quite literally in some of your situations, you know? It could be a new house. It could be getting rid of certain people in your life that are, you know, no longer 
doing anything for you that just seem to be taking from you that you seem to be considering all the time left and right but do they even consider you you know what i mean are you even being considered as much as you consider other people and i know that's what you're here to do i know that's part of who you are and i'm not asking you to necessarily change that i'm asking you to improve it because there's a way that you can consider others without constantly tiptoeing without constantly trying to you know, avoid conflict. That is the shadow side of Libra. Where are you avoiding conflict? This month is going to help you shake shit up to get a little feisty, right? To get a little spicy, to get a little saucy and shake some shit up that needs to be shaken up, right? I will say to not act on impulse, right? It's not a good idea to necessarily act on impulse but it's also not a good idea to not assert yourself. This was reversed, to not assert yourself. Because if you don't assert yourself and you keep holding back, if you keep trying to keep the peace or not start drama or not start a conflict, you're gonna be the one that ends up miserable. And this tower moment is going to happen eventually. It's going to break, you're going to snap. And you maybe you need to get to that snapping point for some of you, but you don't have to. You know, if you're able to stand up, if you're able to speak the truth, if you're able to deal with your feelings, if you're able to trust in yourself, because this month is also really showing you why you don't trust yourself. Because if you trusted yourself, you would trust your own thoughts and opinions and you would articulate them because you're a beautiful master articulator right? Libra is so freaking masterful at articulating things. You always find a way. Your cardinal air, duh. <laughs> so this month, you have to find a way to articulate your opinions, to articulate your feelings, to get things out, to trust in yourself and trust in your intuition, to face your shadow shit. Because if not, like I said, that breaking point's going to come and it's going to be possibly a little bit you know what i mean like it, it may not be as as easy flowing as it could be basically right maybe some of you need that and that's fine we all need a good breakdown sometimes right we all need a good breaking moment um where we just snap and finally let it all out but there's no reason to let it build up if you don't have to is all i'm saying you know what i mean that's basically what I'm saying. You've gotten to a place this month, Libra, where you will be getting to a place where you are sick of balancing a, a very thin line. You know what I mean? Sorry, it's too many cards. It's like one thing to balance things. It's another thing when you're having to walk a very thin line to balance those things and do both at the same time. That's when it's like, oh, screw this. You know what I mean? Like you can't please everybody you just can't and i know like yeah that sounds very obvious but you really can't you know what i mean you really can't you can't constantly be making sure everybody has everybody's cup is full everybody has what they want everybody is feeling how they want you know like everybody is satisfied you can't constantly do that and so this month you could find yourself pouring those cups out and saying, screw it. I'm emptying all of it because I have my own desires. I have my own dreams. I have my own healing. I have my own reset that I need. So this month is like a beautiful reset. It's like pushing the reset button, emptying out all the shit that's keeping you from being you and going towards all the shit that actually gets you excited, that you actually want to be doing and going towards right? That you actually want to be exploring and learning. But it's so important that you speak up about how you're feeling. That is like so, so important, Libra, this month. Um, obviously, there could be stuff coming up in relationships too, especially around that Aries full moon around the 20th. You could experience some things maybe like the week before that as well. But that Aries full moon is really bringing up some relationship stuff. Um, what it is that you want in a relationship and what it is that you don't. Possibly boundary issues, right? Boundary issues. Oh, wow. Look at this. We have the seven, eight, and nine of wands, right? And this deck has been used many times. This is not a new deck that just hasn't been shuffled very well. Two of swords on the bottom. 
where do you need to stand up for yourself even if other people disagree with you where do you need to face disagreement you know this fear of disagreement this fear of people not being happy with you or not liking you needs to be addressed because it's going to happen you cannot always toe that line you cannot always be fair you have to let go of this idea to be fair all the time and you have to go within and figure out why you feel that way in the first place. You know what I mean? You have to shine a light on the truth within you, Libra. You have to stand up for yourself this month and you may need to make some tough decisions this month, okay? Um, like I said, boundary issues, commitment issues, uh, you know, moving forward, but it's not necessarily a time to rush into making impulsive decisions. It's definitely a time to be aware because you could be feeling very forgetful this month. You could be feeling a little bit delayed, a little bit held back, a little bit slower than usual. Um, and but it's time to be aware of your true intentions, what you really intend on, what you're really doing, what you're really saying with your actions and what you're really afraid of it's time to clean house right clean away everything that is not you so you can get to everything that is you and commit to yourself let go of this old conditioning these old habits these old patterns of putting other people ahead of yourself. You have to find that balance, right? You have to. You know, people think that we are just all little old Libra, you know, we're just nice and we smile and look cute and pretty and just like don't hurt a fly, you know what I mean? But no, <laughs> Venus, or not Venus, uh, Libra is the catalyst, the transitioning period, the first sign of the fall entering us into shadow season into that darker the the underworld right like we are between virgo and scorpio the lightest one of the lightest signs right virgo the virgin in scorpio the scorpion one of the darkest signs right the sign that is literally about the shadow right we can wear both hats we can play both sides and so you need to ask yourself which side are you playing and which side are you repressing not that your shadow side is bad. Your shadow side is not bad. It's an aspect of who you are. It's repressed shit, things that you repress because you want to appear a certain way. And so you need to face that stuff this month. That is how you break out of this. That is how you get free. That is how you liberate yourself. Okay. You also need to ask yourself about your commitments because we have the vow and agape, which is about devotion. So this tells me that you are possibly committing to something or devoting yourself to something, or whether you're doing it subconsciously or not. Like, are you, like, we're all kind of, we all kind of worship something, right? Whether it's money, a relationship, looks, you know, I know that was all like very superficial. <laughs> Sometimes it's like religion or, you know, whatever, but you need to figure out what it is that you're worshiping, what it is that's like so important to you, whether it's subconscious or not, it's time to figure it out because it may not actually be what you want to be worshiping, or in some of your cases, it could be something that you want to be worshiping, but maybe you need to get back to that. Maybe you need to get back to your spiritual connection. Maybe you need to get back to some kind of spiritual practice, right? Um, you could be doing something this month with appearance, with health, with starting something or start like reflecting on something that you want to start. We will definitely go over uh, more in your new and moon video. Uh, Libra for the horoscopes. Um, so make sure that you're subscribed so you can watch out for the new and full moon video where I talk about all signs. So anyways, let's go over some of your astrology and the important dates that you want to watch out for this month, Libra. So we have the new moon in your sign on October 6th. So that first week of October could be kind of like quite intense um, because this Libra new moon is intense. So this is definitely a time where you feel 
this kind of like new but also possibly kind of old energy coming in and it's intense you know mars is conjunct this new moon so you are going to be pushed to possibly take some kind of action or do something or make some kind of stand or defend something or um there may be some conflict or some challenge or some kind of martian like energy or themes that come up around this libra new moon and on top of that the ruler of this libra new moon venus your ruler is at 29 degrees scorpio very very intense okay um <laughs> Pluto goes direct the same day. So this is really a time where you're seeing these challenges, these shadow traits, these things that need to be addressed. You know what I mean? So watch out for that first week of October. And then we have your ruling planet moving into Sagittarius on the 7th. And so from the 7th to like the 10th, you're going to be feeling this energy with Venus conjunct the South Node and Sag of possibly past situations, past friendships, past patterns, past issues, karmic issues coming up. Uh, in terms of your environment, in terms of people in your life, in terms of your, your local community, your neighborhood, your siblings, relatives, communication, speaking up, learning, there could be something going on with those themes around that time frame. So you definitely want to watch out for that. On the 9th, we have the Mercury Kazemi, which means Mercury and the Sun will be getting together and Mars will be there too. Um, and so that could definitely be a time where you're having some light bulb moments, some realizations, or you're putting some puzzle pieces together, or you're reflecting on certain decisions. Um, but either way, around the 9th, that is definitely going to be kind of like a highlight or uh, some kind of revealing. From the 13th to the 22nd, the Sun and Mars taking turns squaring Pluto from your sign to Capricorn, which is your fourth house sector of home, family, foundations, the past, security, um, comfort, things like that, your childhood. So this could really be pulling out some shadow stuff when it comes to conditioning or unearthing some things within your roots, your family, your origins, your home life. Um, it could also be bringing up certain tension that causes you to make changes or to uh, do something different to transform something when it comes to your home life or your family you could be feeling power struggles with yourself and your family you could be feeling like something unfair is going on or you could be trying to make some kind of decision regarding something to do with family so definitely watch out for that time frame and then we have mercury going direct on the 18th with jupiter as well so that could be from that point forward, you'll start putting more and more pieces together. Things will start making more sense, more clarity will be found. Um, and you may start feeling a little bit more optimistic around that time. And then we have the full moon in Aries on the 20th, which I kind of mentioned. We'll talk more about that in the full moon in Aries video for all signs. And then on the 22nd, we have Venus, your ruling planet, squaring Neptune from your third house to your sixth house. So there could be some stuff coming up with work, your environment, communication. You could be working on something, creating something. A great time for creativity, but it may be not so great of a time for delusions, illusions, kind of, you know, not like seeing something that's not necessarily realistic. Um, so watch out for that energy around that time. And then on the from the 23rd until November, the Sun and Mars will take turns moving into Scorpio and then squaring Saturn, which is definitely going to be tense, <laughs> to say the least. Uh, and this is happening in your fifth house of Aquarius and your um, third, I'm sorry, second house of Scorpio, which is your financial sector, your money, your resources, those kinds of things. So there may be some challenges with those themes children joy money romance love anything that brings you joy creativity passion versus money finances resources priorities so there may be some tension around that time with that you know so definitely pay attention to those themes around the end of the month and we'll talk more about that as the month goes along and when we get into the november horoscope so don't worry um but yeah make sure to follow me on instagram libra if you want to keep up with me and i also have a patreon where you can keep up with me and get exclusive content. We go over all of these transits in detail every week and what you can expect. So anyways, I will see you guys in my other video. Happy birthday, have a good birthday. And yeah, 
bye what's up scorpio welcome back to the channel and happy birthday if your birthday is in the month of october let's go ahead and get into your reading scorpio this month is a very very crazy month and i'm not going to lie it may be a little more difficult for you uh, than some of the other signs there will be signs that are feeling this a lot more than others um, or at least somewhat more i wouldn't say you're like one of the first signs i would i would put at the top of the list for this but you are one of the signs that may feel this month a little bit more than others some others i guess you could say because this libra energy is happening in your 12th house and so it is really bringing up uh behind the scenes stuff subconscious stuff you know hidden stuff things from the past karmic stuff right things that are hidden 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 enemies you know things that are working against you or that cause you to self-sabotage or even things that you do that cause you to self-sabotage that cause you to go against yourself right and you could find yourself feeling a little more secluded this month you know, you may not really want to be around a lot of people, or if you do want to be around people, maybe it's kind of in a hidden way, or like you want to be around like one person and just kind of be off, you know, with them kind of out of the spotlight in some way. You definitely are going to be reflecting on your relationships and things going on in your relationships from the past or certain patterns or cycles um, within your life or within your relationships. And so you definitely want to watch out for those themes this month, Scorpio. It's a really good time to remove yourself and take some time to focus on you. Take some time to practice mindfulness, to be more aware, to really, you know, focus on anything that is holding you back that is bringing you down, that, you know, the things that you tell yourself, like, are you doing things that end up self-sabotaging? Are you scared of commitment? Are you, do you have certain fears of commitment and therefore maybe you push people away or you, you know, do certain things that end up coming back to bite you in the ass. Like you end up self-sabotaging it. You know, you end up in this like self-fulfilling prophecy because we have the goblins here, which is about the, you know, things in your head that you tell yourself, right? Oh, I can't, I'm not enough, it's not good enough, I'm not good enough, whatever the case may be, like, I won't ever be able to do this, I, that's not me, this, that, and the other, like, that's what this card is about, and so it's bringing these things up, it is showing you where you do these things in your mind where you are not being real with yourself you know what i mean like it's bringing things up it is drudging these things up like in this stormfield card to show you that you have got to stop separating yourself because we have coming apart here and when i say that i don't mean physically separating yourself because like i said i think it would be good for you to take some space to take some time to get away to focus on you this month you know what i mean to kind of separate yourself from other people for a little bit so you can get right with you and in your mind because what i see here with coming apart it's not necessarily like i said about physically it's more so about internally where do you go off on yourself internally? Where do you put yourself down internally with this goblins card that you're literally separating and fragmenting yourself? So you have all these different parts of yourself that are in conflict with each other because you don't accept you for who you are. These cards need to be integrated, right? They need to be integrated because this month, Scorpio, is a massive month for some kind of metamorphosis for you like you are going through some massive change this month where you are purging shit you are clearing out old shit and it's going to be somewhat easy for you to escape or to blame others or to you know take it out on other people or to start conflicts with other people but you need to just stop and take a minute and reflect and see where actually you're doing this to you that's what the 12th house is about. Look, boom, solitude. Um, that is what the 12th house is about. Where are you purposely making yourself be in solitude? Like, where are you, like you, where are you purposely doing things that are putting you in solitude, that are making you lonely? Sorry if you guys hear a bunch of yelling. There's these kids outside right now um, that are being very, very loud. So anyways, 
it's time to reflect on old patterns and see what's no longer working. It's time to reflect on old cycles to see what's no longer working, old conditioning that is no longer you. You know, like you don't have to be that person anymore that you used to be. You really don't. You have the choice here. You have the choice. You can either go back to that person or you can do something different and bring a souvenir with you, a talisman with you and be like, look, look, bitch, look what I went through. I'm no longer the same me anymore. You know what I mean? Like this is a time where you are finding your way and where you may be feeling a little bit lost this month, Scorpio, but it's going to be okay. You're going to find yourself, even if you're feeling lost in the chaos, even if there's a, a damn tornado going on, you're going to get through it. You have the strength and the courage and the heart, the passion, the love to get through this. And you, I see here, you have people that love you, but you need to love yourself and stop carrying these burdens with you, Scorpio, right? It's like, it's not fair to you. You deserve better and it's not fair to the people that love you, right? Like, I feel like there are people in your life that truly love you that do not want you to keep carrying these burdens anymore. Hopefully this is resonating for you guys. Like I said, said in the beginning, some of this stuff may resonate a little more for Scorpio risings, but yeah, I don't know, who knows? Let me know down below though. So I do see here that Scorpio, you may be going through some hard times, you know? This looks like some possibly dark night of the soul stuff, as some would say, um, but I see it more as like you finding your worth and your value. You seeing that it's okay to um, take a break, to focus on you, take some kind of like retreat or vacation. It does not need to be somewhere super far unless you can afford that and want to do that but it can literally be like out in the woods a mile or two from your house you know what i mean it does not have to be super far it could be some kind of short trip um just be careful but other than that like you're taking some time to find your own value for some of you, you could have job or money stuff going on here too uh i see but for the most part, I think a lot of this is figuring out what it is that, you know, is going to give you some kind of meaning, some kind of purpose, some kind of value, some kind of fulfillment. You know what I mean? Finding some kind of passion or a deep passion. For some of you, you could be learning something new or investigating something. You could be finding something that brings you more stability and more security. Uh, that brings you more value over time, that helps you to feel like you're actually being useful in something, if that makes sense. So just some things that I'm seeing here. It's time to get true and honest with yourself about where you feel possibly betrayed, where you feel possibly heartbroken. And it's also going to be really important, Scorpio, this month that you don't speak from a place of trying to inflict pain on others. And I'm not saying this is for all of you. It may not be for all of you. It may just be for some of you. I think that some of you could be, while you're hurting, you could find yourself, you know, getting upset and then starting to possibly inflict pain on others with your words because you're upset. And so you just need to be careful of that. It is not like you can talk about your pain. You can have conversations about your pain. But if you start feeling like you want to inflict pain on others or hurt others, like you have a sharp tongue or something like that, that's when you need to kind of take a step back and allow yourself to process it. Allow yourself to be curious about your pain or about your emotions, about how you feel, rather than coming at it from an angry point of view or a demanding point of view or like you know some shit, you know what I mean? Develop a curiosity once again wizard of awareness develop a mindfulness about this develop an open-mindedness and optimism about this because that will help you get through it that much fucking more okay um this could also be others maybe doing this to you and just know like you don't have to put up with that you don't have to take that uh you know someone could come to you and start talking about their own pain or something like that so uh just something that i see here so 
Um, I do actually want to clarify that really quick. Okay, so four of wands. There could be some kind of milestone this month, Scorpio, that you realize that deals with something from the past or some kind of heartbreak, some kind of hurt or pain from the past um, that may also need to be grieved, okay? Um, or some kind of communication that comes in here. So anyways, that's what I'm getting for you, Scorpio, with the tarot. Let's talk about your astrology really quick here. So we have the first week of October. We have that Libra new moon in your 12th. That's definitely going to be a time of heated energy in your 12th house, possibly exposing some things. Really, this whole month is going to be exposing things, but that could be kind of like the start of it or like somewhat of the start of it this month. And Pluto goes direct. And so that's going to be a massive kind of like facing the truth time, facing possibly some dark truths, you know, some painful or disturbing truths that maybe you've been hiding or some kind of intensity or power struggle going on in your community or in your neighborhood or um, with, you know, uh, family or uh, long distance family, something like that could be going on around that time. So, we also have uh, Venus moving out of your sign on the 7th and into Sagittarius in your second house. And then on the 9th, we have Mercury coming into a Kazemi with the sun. And Mars will be there as well. And Venus will be conjunct the south node in your second house. So that definitely could be a time where you're feeling maybe a little bit like you're lacking in something financially or something financially is going on where you're feeling like you're lacking in some way, like you're feeling like, oh, okay, like, you know, there could be patterns coming up or certain resource issues that you're having, certain financial issues you may be having around that time. But with the Mercury Kazemi, um, you also have the ability to gain more knowledge about it, to gain more information, to see it in a new way or to you know see something a little more clearly so anyways then um on the 10th saturn moves direct and saturn is going to move direct in your fourth house of home and family foundations childhood your past your roots and so basically there could be something starting to shift in that area around that time frame and then from the 13th till the 22nd, we have the Sun and Mars taking turns squaring Pluto, which is definitely going to bring up a lot of intensity and possible extremes or hidden things coming to light, conflicts, uh, possibly things like that. And that's going to be happening once again in your 12th and third house. So that could be a time where you are seeing some of the conflicts via, you know, communication or verbal conflicts, you know, wanting to lash out in some way. And so that's a time that I would say to be careful of. There could definitely be a lot coming to light from the past or a lot being exposed uh, that you've not been aware of or that you've been avoiding or something like that. So watch out for that time frame. On the 18th, Mercury and Jupiter will go direct and be out of their retrograde motion. So that could definitely be some forward shifts um, in the terms of your thinking, your perspective, you know, all of that, feeling more optimistic, more hopeful, more open-minded. And then on the 20th, we have the Aries full moon, which I'm going to do a separate video on for all signs. So make sure that you watch that. And then we have on the 23rd, the sun will move into your sign, Scorpio. So it will officially be your season. But then the sun will start to square Saturn at first, unfortunately, in Aquarius, which is your fourth house, like I said, of home, family, uh, your foundations, etc., etc. So childhood, roots, all of that. So there may be some things coming up, some restrictions, some burdens, some responsibilities, or some, you know, big things that you're facing in terms of home, family, uh, your roots, your foundation around the end of the month um, and even into November. And then Mars is going to move into your sign where it is home. Your ruling planet is finally in your sign. Um, and the sun's going to start opposing Uranus by the 30th. So there will, you'll be met with some restrictions or some burdens or some heaviness at first with something, but then you will feel like, okay, I need to make a change or I need to liberate myself or I need to break free of this or I need to have more freedom or more space in some way. And so there's going to be kind of like a pattern of that a few different times um, towards the end of the month into November. So watch out for that. So 
that is what I'm getting for you, Scorpio. Definitely let me know down below if this reading resonated with you. I would love to hear about it and love to hear your feedback. Please feel free to come back throughout the month and keep up and let me know how everything works out if these dates end up being pretty big for you. And so, yeah, I will see you guys in my other videos. Thank you so, so much for watching. Bye. What's up, Sagittarius? Welcome to your October 2021 tarot and astrology video. So, Sag, October for you guys is a month that really, really deals with your social life. Your, your life in which you are connecting with others, the groups you belong to, the people that you keep around you, the company you keep, organizations, any kind of groups of like-minded people. This could be Facebook groups, this could be a yoga group, this could be um, a friend group, anything, any kind of connections that you have in your life are really, really coming up to the surface at this time for you to take a really nice, hard and long look at and notice some truths about, okay? There could be hidden intentions, things going on behind the scenes. You could be really seeing that maybe certain people in your life do not really have the integrity that you thought they did, or maybe certain people in your life aren't who you thought they were. You could be breaking off certain connections this month and really trying to make really big decisions regarding your future and the people that you want to move forward with you in that future. Um, this could be a month where you're also very riled up in terms of opinions where you're feeling very opinionated you're wanting to debate or get your thoughts out there get your opinions out there or where you are feeling like you're you know needing to be the peacemaker in certain situations and this month is also showing you where maybe you've been keeping the peace too much maybe you've been avoiding conflicts and allowing certain people to possibly take advantage of you in some way. You've been giving your energy, time, money, or resources to uh, certain people or certain friendships, certain groups, certain organizations, certain people in your life or situations in your life that you're really starting to see another side of. And so you wanna be very careful this month and very protective of who you're giving your time, energy, money, and resources to. You could also be having a lot of different thoughts coming up about the collective, certain people, certain, you know, certain like-minded people in your life. You could be seeing another side to things that you weren't seeing before regarding certain social situations or just the world in general, the status quo. Uh, this is going to be really, really big in the month of October for you because a lot of this stuff that's moving through Libra this month is in your 11th house and it is making squares down to Pluto in your second house, which deals with your resources, your possession, your time, your energy, your money, also your priorities. Where are you making certain things priorities in your life that are actually possibly taking from you? or draining you in some way. And that's kind of what I'm getting here. Like there's this energy of a drain. There's this energy of feeling drained by something or someone or certain people, certain people that you're around, possibly certain environments, certain friends. And it's like, you know, maybe you have to see these people or talk to these people on a day-to-day -day basis, but you're kind of getting to a point where you're really seeing that there are different views. And you may also be seeing that you have certain similarities with other groups of people that you thought were your opposite or that you thought were different in some way. And so I think that's gonna be really interesting as well this month. You're seeing the differences, but you're also seeing the similarities. You're seeing what's been kind of hidden, what's been kind of subconscious, what's been going on behind the scenes. And I think that you're also possibly ending uh, a lot of, connections you know there could definitely be a lot of cutting off going on in your life when it comes to certain connections in your life and so let's go ahead and get into your cards we have making a choice here which like i was just already saying i feel like you could be making some really big decisions this month you could be figuring out which way you want to go with something and then we also have uh protecting treasure reversed 
which is about, you know, protecting that which is important to you, which I was saying could be your re resources, your time, your money, your energy. What are you putting into something that maybe is not giving it back or that is maybe draining it from you, right? What are you, are you trying to control a situation uh, that actually isn't getting you anywhere? Are you trying to, you know, are you playing in some kind of power struggle or power game with certain people or certain situations that needs to change, right? Something here needs to change with this metamorphosis card this month, you know? That it's definitely a time of catharsis. This is a month of catharsis where we are going through deep, profound, and meaningful changes in order to get out of certain situations that are no longer aligning with us, that are uh, keeping us unbalanced in some way or not bringing us the harmony in some way that we need in our lives. And so this is a month where you're making difficult decisions to possibly change certain situations or certain people or to cut out certain people to end certain connections that are no longer bringing you what you need to make the necessary changes, right? And I would say this is going to get really clear as we go throughout the month. I would say after like the 18th is when you're probably going to start seeing yourself move forward and make those positive changes because we are in the retrograde, the Mercury retrograde until the 18th. So we won't quite be moving forward until the 18th onward. And then we have Gentle Gardener, which is about catering and taking care of and nurturing and gently gardening those things that are important to you, that treasure, regardening it, pulling out the weeds and you know, planting new seeds to get you somewhere that you want to be rather than in this situation. There could be a lot of drama this month, a lot of people coming back from the past, a lot of old, like, influences, old alliances, old acquaintances, you know, and all of this is really to show you these certain cycles that you've been under. All right, there's like a person like parked right there and it looks like they got in a pretty bad wreck, so... <laughs> that's like that's why I keep looking over there because I'm like, what are they doing? And they're next to my car, so it's kind of like freaking me out. But so I feel like you are really weeding certain people out of your life, and you these other people are coming back around possibly to show you certain patterns, to show you certain cycles, to show you why you may, you know, to to show you glimpses or similarities as to what's going on now with the people in your life now so you want to pay attention to that because this is a month where you're really going to need boundaries where you're really going to need to take back your power and stop giving it away to other people where you're really going to need to take a really deep and possibly brutally honest look at what the hell is going on when it comes to the people in your life, the connections in your life, what it is that you're doing, your future, your place in the world, and how that is possibly working against you rather than for you, if that makes sense. So moving on to your tarot. So we basically have the same thing reiterated in your tarot. We have the emperor and the four of pinnacles rever reverse. So I feel like Sag, you know, you're trying to be in control of something or you're trying to go after these goals, these, you know, these things that you want to achieve in the world, but is it costing you? You know what I mean? Or are you being too giving in some circumstances? You know what I mean? Are you, are you losing out in some way? Like being giving is not a bad thing, but are you being taken advantage of? You know, with this four of Pinnacles reverse, this tells me that this is hurting your resources or your finances in some way. Something is, right? And it could be happening, like it could be revealing some dark hidden truths to do with your money, your finances, things that need to be addressed when it comes to your priorities, your responsibilities, you know? Um, maybe you need to be saving. Maybe you need to be investing in things that are in assets that are of value that will last a long time, that will stand the test of time. Capricorn, your second house, right? Um, where are certain things that you've been doing kind of falling through the cracks, so to say, right? And so I think that is, you know, what I'm getting here with this. We also have the Knight of Cups reversed. I feel like you could be 
kind of running on feelings or the need to satisfy something within you, uh, the need to temporarily satisfy something within you and not really seeing it clearly. Um, I feel like for, for some of you, this may not be for all of you, but this could be someone in your life that like is continually struggling and like constantly needing something from you. It may not always be money. Maybe it's just like your time, your energy, et cetera. But and you're trying to be that person, that responsible person, or that person that is there, that is solid, et cetera, et cetera, but it's actually not really helping, you know? It's actually just maybe enabling, you know? And so I think that's something that could be going on with some of you, maybe not all of you. We also have the Nine of Swords here with the Ace of Wands reversed. And so what I see here, Sag, is that there's a lot of stress around where you're putting your energy, where you're putting your effort, where you're putting your time. Um, there is a lot of lack of motivation with something. It's like you're losing that lack of motivation. You're losing that energy or that passion that you once had for something. You just don't, you're like stressing out about not being able to do something or not being able to take action on something. Um, you're feeling like for some of you, you could be feeling like you are almost in a situation where you don't have a choice. That could be for some of you, it could be feeling like I have to do this even though I don't want to. And it's really been stressing you out. And then we also have the Queen of Swords. And I think this is really like, there's a way to go about this that is graceful, that is elegant, that is, you know, discerning. So I think it's going to be really important that you have all the information you need, that you know what you're doing, that you become more aware, become more mindful, uh, and read up on whatever this is that you're going through, like become smart about it, right? Like start learning these things. Like the Queen of Swords is kind of like knowledge is power, right? You need to stand firm in your decisions. You need to stand firm in your truth. You need to accept your truth instead of running from it, right? And so that's what I'm seeing here with this Queen of Swords. It's like, yeah, you may go through this little bit of a hard time this month with this, with this Nine of Swords, Ace of Wands reverse, but the Queen of Swords is like, okay, we need to pick ourselves up. We need to accept what is, and we need to make a decision regarding what is true for you and what is true for your integrity, right? And so that's what I'm seeing there. We also have the Seven of Pentacles and the Knight of Pentacles. So I feel like this is that gently gentle gardener card. This is you rebuilding. This is you doing the hard work to put the time, effort, and energy back into something to redo it after maybe it was lost or maybe it fell down or maybe it didn't work out whatever the case may be. And this is also you finally ending certain karmic cycles to do with certain connections in your life. This is you cutting ties, not only physically, but I believe emotionally as well with a person or certain people, certain connections in your life and seeing these, how these connections reiterate like things that have happened in the past you're seeing how everything is like coming back around in this full circle and you're seeing how you need to have boundaries how you know yes there may be certain people that you don't like for some of you or that you're struggling with this month like certain people that you are arguing with or just not getting along with and this month is a month where you really start seeing another side to that you start seeing like okay it doesn't mean you have to be friends it doesn't mean that you have to um you know enable anybody or anything like that that's not what i'm saying but i feel like for some of you you also are seeing another side of like i was saying before like an opposite side so it's like you are seeing things from a new angle and from other people's shoes more and it doesn't mean that you're going to be like bff or anything but you're able to see all sides in like a universal way this month. You're able to see things from a bigger picture when it comes to other people in your life. And that does not mean that you have to keep putting up with shit that is not helping you in some way. Uh, but you are really being asked to kind of reevaluate what you're valuing and what you are paying attention to. Like the narrative or the sides or the, you know, social aspects of things that you are paying attention to because you are seeing it from a different angle this month so you can ascend so you can transcend it and not keep 
looking at it in this kind of black or white way, if that makes sense. So anyways, that is what I'm seeing in your card, Sag. Hopefully that ends up resonating. Definitely let me know down below. Um, astrologically speaking, a lot of it I really already went over. Uh, just in general, like I said, this is a month that really is about your social life and some challenges from that to your values, priorities, uh, finances, resources, things like that. But also we have Venus moving in your sign on the 7th, right after that new moon in Libra uh, in your 11th house. And Venus is going to come across the south node in your sign first. So you may really start feeling tempted or pulled or noticing themes of like past patterns, past connections, past relationships, past cycles that you are possibly harmonizing um, from the 7th till like maybe the 10th. Okay, so watch out for those themes then. So we have Saturn going direct in your third house. So this could definitely be some kind of slow but kind of forward movement happening in that third house sector of communication, friends, neighborhood, community, uh, things like that, the, your your day-to-day -day life basically. So then we have from the 13th to the 22nd, the sun and Mars squaring Pluto from your 11th house to your second house. And that's really when you're going to notice even more intensely a lot of these themes with other people, like-minded people, groups of people, social groups, you know, communities in some way, shape, or form being challenged by, you know, your money, resources, priorities, possessions, etc. So then on the uh, 20th, we have a full moon in Aries, um, and I'm going to do a separate video on that, so make sure that you're watching out for that. On the 23rd, we have the sun in moving into the sign of Scorpio which it will then start squaring Saturn. And this is going to be in your 12th and your third house. So this could definitely be a lot that you are revealing or a lot that is coming out from beneath the surface, if that makes sense. This could definitely be a time where you are feeling motivated to expose certain things or where you are feeling motivated to talk about certain things, where you are feeling more opinionated, where you are feeling motivated to go deeper or to dig out certain truths, okay? Where you are feeling motivated to shine a light on things that are hidden or things that people aren't talking about. So we also will have Mars then moving into Scorpio on the 30th of October and the sun will start opposing Uranus. So, and we're going to go over more of this as that gets closer, but once Mars moves into Scorpio as well, there's definitely going to be like a ton of motivation happening. You're going to be feeling more assertive with your opinion. You're going to be feeling like, for some of you, it could be like, should I say something or not? For others of you, you're going to be feeling more assertive with your opinion. Um, there's going to be like this built up energy where you need to express yourself. There could also be things going on with your community or your neighborhood or your local environment that are kind of shady in some way or that end up coming to light. So you just want to watch around that time. Those are going to be some things that you can notice. That is what I'm seeing for you guys, Sag. Hopefully this reading ends up resonating. Definitely let me know down below if it does. I'd love to hear your feedback. And uh, yeah, I will see you guys in my other videos. Bye. What's up, Capricorn? Welcome back. And yeah, welcome to your October 2021 Tarot and Astrology reading for this month. Let's go ahead and get into it. So right away, I was just pre-shuffling and I have the Strength card and Ghostlands for you guys. And right away, I heard, what are you trying to prove? And it was like really crazy. It was like really literal, really distinct. Um, I could just hear it plain as day. So yeah, I don't know. I just looked at those cards and heard, what are you trying to prove? I think you're trying to prove something to somebody from the past or to prove yourself over something in the past um, that's no longer there right? Like it's, it's just, it lives inside of you. Those emotions, that conditioning is still there, but it's no longer there. It's like, because we have this strength card and don't get me wrong. Like, yeah, you're strong. You're a badass. You got this. You know what I mean? Not saying you don't, but with ghost lands here, it's like, are you trying to perform or prove something for an invisible audience in your head is it really even real you know what i mean like 
is this just something from your past that you're trying to like say, look, I did it or look, I'm going to do it or to get to that point to where you can say I did it to where you feel like you proved yourself or whatever. But are you ever going to get there? Is it ever going to be enough? Because constantly thinking that you need to prove yourself is like a constant repetition of you telling yourself it's never enough. Right. And so there's some like deep conditioning here, I feel, that is being unearthed from what I'm feeling and seeing in your cards and in your astrology. There's a lot of deep conditioning that you've been that you've been conditioned to believe since you were a child about proving yourself and pleasing others or just to please others, you know, um, pushing yourself way past your limits or, you know, something along those lines because we have a lot of like October for you Capricorn is very much about your your public world your your public life your career legacy you know what it is that you want to build in the world and so I think that um sorry it's too many cards but I think you're going to have some big decisions coming up this month when it comes to what it is that you want to do and you're really reflecting on what it is that you're wanting to do, where you feel your purpose is, where you feel your path is, where you feel you are in life, you know, uh, that's going to be really big. Oh, we have Dragon's Lair. Um, I'm still learning this deck, but I believe this deals with protection. So let's see what the book says really quick about this card. You have a remarkable internal warning system that lets you know when things are out of alignment. You're about to enter dangerous territory, so tread carefully and be aware of your surroundings. The path you're on now is one that will challenge you to the core. That said, peril is also exciting and exhilarating, like the danger you feel before you enter a new relationship knowing that you'll be changed forever. A life lived fully isn't lived only in safety. A new experience is calling to you, one that will test your courage. The choice is yours, but there is greater value in risk taking than remaining unchallenged. New territories are waiting to be discovered. It also talks about red flags and temptation. So just kind of, that's like a really big theme with all of the readings so far, like hidden intentions, secrets, lies, betrayal, uh, red flags. So just keep an eye out for that because of all of this Pluto energy, like Pluto squares that we have coming this month. I think this is a time where you are trying to follow some old path to prove yourself to something that's not even like there or real anymore, ghost lands, right? Like whether it was your conditioning growing up, your parents, a parent, or, you know, friends or whoever growing up, like you're still trying to prove yourself. You're trying to prove yourself to yourself now, but kind of like in another sense, you're still trying to prove yourself to them. You just don't realize that it's not something that you're like consciously thinking, right? But it's like time to move on right it's time to prove yourself to you by letting that go stop like you know killing yourself doing something that you're not even into or something that you're not even a big fan of whatever the case may be and start doing something that makes you happy magical map shifter so what i see here capricorn is that you like I was kind of just saying, I feel like that goes a lot with what I was just saying. You're shifting directions. First, you may not realize it yet. You may not realize it right now while you're watching this, but by the end of October, I think there's going to be a major direction shift and where it is that you're headed right now in life, where, what it is that you want to do, what kind of dreams you want to fulfill, uh, what kind of like what you want to do out in the world, what's actually going to make you feel happy, fulfill you, give you a sense of purpose, where you can be more curious and follow things that emotionally feel good to you, that feel good to your heart and not just trying to continue to hold up the world on your hand. You know what I mean? You've done enough. Like, seriously, you've done enough. And I think it's time that you surrender, that you surrender that old way of doing things, right? We have the hanged man. Because I feel like you've been feeling really trapped when it comes to what it is that you emotionally want. 
And then this month, it's like you're cutting yourself free. You get the new idea, but you know that it's gonna be a process. With death here, right? It's like, yeah, okay, I have to die so a new me can be reborn. I have to go through this major change. I have to go through this major meta metamorphosis, right? To get to where you wanna go. Six of Wands, no longer feeling like, oh, I need to prove myself. No longer feeling like you're in this constant battle with yourself to get somewhere, right? That where you can't even really see. With all of this Libra energy squaring Pluto and your sign Capricorn, you are noticing a lot of things coming out from the depths of your soul, from the depths of who you are. You, your integrity may be challenged this month. You may be challenged. Dun, dun, dun. Six of Cups, Eight of Cups. Yeah, your integrity may be challenged this month. And I think you just get to a point where you're like, I'm so tired of being stuck in this, like, I think you're waking up to some major illusions and you're just over it and you're like, okay. It's almost like you feel like you finally have a chance to go after what it is you want. You finally have a chance to face fears, to triumph or overcome some kind of like toxic habits or patterns that the toxic conditioning that's been holding you back. That is what I'm getting for you guys, Capricorn, and your tarot. So let's go over your astrology a little bit more. On the 6th, you may notice this kind of story really starting. Some stuff that comes up or some information that comes up or some kind of situation that arises around the six, whether it's a new thought, a new idea, or some kind of external situation regarding your career, your future, your goals, what it is that you wanna achieve in the world, your legacy, what it is that you wanna leave behind, where you're going, where you wanna go, you know, all of that. Um, and then around the ninth, like by the ninth, you probably have even more of an idea or some kind of like light bulb moment, some kind of realization or some kind of news that comes in that really kind of shifts your focus or shows you something that kind of helps you connect the dots in some way. And then from the 13th, to the 22nd, you are going to possibly see something for what it really is, involving your future, your career, what it is you wanna achieve, because the sun and Mars will be squaring Pluto in your sign through that time. So that may be a time where you're like really seeing things and really feel like something needs to be done or you need to make some kind of change. On the 23rd, the sun moving into the sign of Scorpio, which is your 11th house, and it will start squaring Saturn in your second house. You want to be careful around that time when it comes to people that you're networking with and money, resources, finances, priorities, okay? Because there could be some kind of challenge happening there. Where are you investing your money or your resources? There could be some kind of major tension there, right? We have the two malefic planets in their home sign squaring. This is gonna be a big fucking deal, okay, at the end of the month. So watch out for those themes at the end of the month. But um, yeah, Capricorn, so that's what I'm seeing for you guys for the month of October. Definitely let me know down below if you end up resonating with this or seeing any of these themes happen in the month of October. I would really love to know, and I will see you guys in my other videos. Bye. Hello, Aquarius. So I do know the sound may be a little bit different and that's because my phone is dying so I cannot use my mic unfortunately right now because it has to be plugged in. So I do apologize for the difference in sound if it doesn't sound as clear or loud. So do excuse that. Um, but let's go ahead and get into your reading, Aquarius. Happy October. October. <laughs> is a fun time for you and everybody honestly um i'm kind of being sarcastic but i'm kind of not october is a time where aquarius you need to be very careful because you may find yourself speaking on things too early 
that you may actually change your mind about later. With Mars and Libra in your ninth house, you're probably feeling really confrontational, maybe even a little bit like you want to debate, <laughs> you want to get into your beliefs, your worldviews, and talk about things, and talk about controversial things, and that's fine, you know? But where you find the middle ground here is where you can talk about those things in a harmonious, peaceful way, right? It's finding an elegant way a stylish way, right? Doing it with good flavor, right? That's where you will really find success in the month of October in this very difficult and turbulent month. And you may also notice Aquarius that your worldviews, your belief systems could be changing very drastically in the month of October, like very drastically. You could be noticing that there is a lot being revealed, a lot being unearthed with Pluto squaring a lot in Libra from your 12th house, okay? So this is a time where you are having to really, really possibly take a step back from some of your personal opinions or personal views and where you are really having to think about what it is that's causing you to be confrontational, what it is that's causing the fear, right? Because with all of this stuff in Libra, it's going to seem like everybody has an opinion it's going to seem like everybody is wanting to talk about their side. Everybody is not seeing the side that you're seeing. And you're going to really be tempted to expose that side. You're going to really be tempted to bring things to light. But first, you need to go within. You need to go inside of yourself and figure out what you're scared of and address that fear. It's going to be very, very important in the month of October because you're going to be possibly triggered. You're going to possibly act from a place that is not actually true to you. It's like kind of that saying, would you rather be right or would you rather be happy? And I know it's like super cliche, but that's what I'm getting for you for the month of October, Aquarius. Knight of Wands, you are feeling fired up with your beliefs, your worldviews, your politics, whatever it may be, religion. You know, Ninth House rules all of these different things. Maybe just an idea, a philosophy, you know, uh, something along those lines, an ideology. There's something you're feeling fueled up about intelligent conversations that you're wanting to debate on or get into, but you may not be seeing it clearly just yet. There may be more that comes out. There may be more that's revealed. You may be changing your mind about something. You may be seeing a different side of something. And so if you act from that impulsive place, just to be right, to take the low ground, so to say. I mean, this month is really about taking the high ground. And I know, you know, over TikTok and whatever else, the high ground has, has been made out to be like the low ground now, you know what I mean? Like people, oh, fuck taking the high ground. Like I'm gonna get petty, but you're not going to get any fulfillment in that, I'm telling you. And I'm not just saying that because it's the right thing to say. I'm saying that because of your damn cards here. You have strength reversed and the five of swords it's a lose-lose situation and you're not going to feel good about yourself if you do it you're not going to feel good about yourself by cutting somebody else down or by telling them what's up by charging in on your horse and saying yo fuck you this is whatever you know like it's not going to satisfy you it's going to be a massive test on your integrity this month a massive test on what you know inside is right versus wanting to correct others. And it's also going to be a month of major, major catharsis, major, major healing. We have coming apart. 
think about this. I say this a lot like over on my Instagram, but more division does not equal unity, right? We don't get to unity by dividing more, right? And that's kind of what I'm getting with this card coming apart. By you trying to correct something, uh, by you possibly obsessing about correcting something, you actually end up pushing yourself farther from it, right? You actually end up separating yourself even more, dividing yourself even more. And it's actually the opposite of what you're going towards or what's going to help you or make you feel uh, better, you know? And so you need to think about that. You could also feel this month like you are possibly disconnecting or coming apart from certain people in your life, which is going to be the case for mostly everybody. Um, like you're growing apart where like you have outgrown certain behaviors, certain people, certain ways of thinking, certain belief systems, certain ideologies, and it's going to feel like a crisis. It's going to feel like, holy shit, who am I now? Like I... I depended on looking at things this way, on this belief system, this ideology, this view, this, you know, whatever, to show me that I was okay or to show me who I was. And then you realize that that has nothing to do with who you are, right? And then we have heal the ouch. So, and which is about healing, we also have the star card. Right. And so this is really about protecting what's important and letting go of the rest. Is your sanity, is your happiness, your integrity important? Is it more important than being right and still losing anyway? Being right and still being wrong, basically. Right. Like what's more important to you? And that is going to be really big for you this month, Aquarius, because this is about you. This is about, it, this is happening to show you where you need to detach to become more you, to become more of the true you rather than an old you, an old version of you, um, who you feel like you need to be, who like, it, this is also showing you where maybe you've been conforming or believing in something or following a certain ideology or path just to keep the peace or just to to get along with other people right or maybe maybe your ideology is not wrong maybe your beliefs are not wrong maybe it's just that it's not a time of jumping in and jumping the gun and trying to be right you know what I mean and instead connecting to who you are you know and figuring out what it is that's more important to you what it is that you value hierophant ten of swords seven of cups it's about addressing your fears ten of swords right your fears when it comes to your belief systems and where those fears could be driving you to do something that's not you or to act in ways that are not you or to feel exhausted, to feel like you're not getting anywhere, to feel run down, to feel like, you know, like you're kind of stagnant or stuck. You're wanting to help people. You're wanting to wake people up. You're wanting to help other people understand another side and there's nothing wrong with that, but it's more so the way that you go about it and how much that is affecting you in return, right? We have judgment reversed here. There, there's something from the past that is coming up for you to deal with, Aquarius. There is something from the past that is trying to show you a new way. I also see some possible job uh, or money stuff coming up here where you are trying to possibly do something new for business or money related, maybe going back to something that you've done before or just doing something more fulfilling. Some of you could be trying to go back to school for something. Some of you could be thinking about continuing your education. You're kind of stuck debating this. You don't know if you have the right resources and tools to do it or if you have the potential. And I'm telling you, you do. Magician, upright, boo. 
you can do it, you got this, do not fret, okay? So, Aquarius. I feel like with October, with this month, some things that you want to watch out for, some dates that you want to watch out for. This Libra new moon on the 6th, you could notice some of these themes before the 6th though, um, if you're watching this before the 6th. So we have uh, the Libra new moon at the same time that Pluto is direct. Pluto goes direct the same day that we have the Libra new moon. The Libra new moon is conjunct Mars. Venus is at 29. This is a big fucking deal. It's going to be a pretty intense day, pretty intense time of new beginnings or feeling like you have to start something. It may, like you may be doing it for others rather than yourself, or you may be doing it, but you may not be 100% sure about it. We also have the gem here and the prayer reversed. I'm gonna get one more card, but so far what I'm getting from that Aquarius is that it's important to see the, the good in things or the potential of things, even when it's hard, right? With the gym there, it's like, even though something could seem not great, it actually may be a blessing, basically. It actually may be something beautiful. There actually may be something miraculous or beautiful about it and also with the prayer reversed i feel like this is a really great month aquarius to be working on your spiritual connection to be getting back into some kind of spiritual practice spiritual connection to connect to yourself more so we have the thema mundi which is basically or i'm sorry the anima mundi which is basically like the world card and then we have the comic Laughter is important this month, not taking things so seriously, looking at the bigger picture, looking at how everything connects. There's some major cycles that may feel like they're closing or like they're reopening this month for you to learn more from or for, for you to uh, look at in some way, Aquarius. And it's not, it's not because the universe is against you or anything like that. It's actually because it's a blessing in disguise it's actually pushing you closer towards getting back into some kind of spiritual connection. I'm not saying that you need to pray. Personally, I'm not a big prayer. I just like talk to my higher self or talk to my mom who's passed away or whatever, you know, like I talk to spirit, source, whatever you want to call it, the universe. It can be any kind of spiritual practice or connection, you know what I mean? But it's important to get back into one this month I'm seeing for you guys. So Aquarius, Libra new moon on the 6th, we already talked about that. And on the 9th, we have the Mercury Kazemi. Basically when, the, when Mercury and the sun meet up in the sky, Mars is going to be there with it as well. This is going to be some major realizations some things are going to start making sense about this Mercury retrograde around that time. You may have some light bulb moments. You may see some things from the past resurfacing. You may start connecting certain dots. There may be news on that day or some kind of communication around that time. So watch out for around the 9th of the month. Then we have Saturn direct on the 10th. Saturn's been retrograding in your sign. So if you've been doing a lot of reflecting or backtracking, or you've been feeling a little bit delayed or slow when it comes to starting things, when it comes to your health, when it comes to your physical vitality, when it comes to yourself, that could start speeding up. You could start feeling a forward momentum at, like on the 10th and onward as Saturn is moving forward again. From the 13th to the 22nd, we will have the Sun and Mars taking turns squaring Pluto. So this is going to be a really big deal. This is happening once again from your ninth house of higher education, higher learning, belief systems, worldviews, um, all of that versus your 12th house of hidden things, hidden enemies, subconscious stuff, healing, uh, self undoing, self sabotage. So where are you possibly trying to uh, get some kind of message out about something that's hidden? Or where are you working on self-sabotaging patterns? Where are you working on things from the past? Where are you working on subconscious patterns or cycles? These are things that may be being addressed or may feel intense or something may motivate you to work on those things or to do something with those themes around that time from the 13th to the 22nd. The 18th, we have Mercury uh, and Jupiter. 
going direct. So around that time, that is when Mercury will be moving forward, no longer retrograde. So you may start really being able to piece things together from like the last month around that time. There may be some good news or some kind of announcement uh, that happens around that time, or you may be announcing something, you may make some kind of decision to do something, or you may be feeling more optimistic around that time. So then on the 20th, we have a full moon in Aries in your third house, which would be perfect for announcing something or perfect for restarting something again or learning something or um, some kind of peak moment in communications. But we will talk more about that in the Aries full moon video. And then on the 23rd until the 31st, the sun will move into Scorpio and start to square Saturn. And then on the 30th, Mars will move into Scorpio and start to square Saturn. This is gonna be a big deal. So towards the end of the month, you may notice some tension starting to come up in your career if you haven't already by that point or with people in power, you know, people in the world, your goals, your future, your legacy, all of those kinds of things versus you, your integrity, who you are as a person, your identity, your health, those things could be at odds with each other around that time. And then Uranus is going to get involved in your fourth house. So that's going to be very much like some kind of opposition possibly between you, your family, your home life versus your work, the world, people in power, authority figures, career, your goals, your legacy, etc. So watch out for those themes towards the end of the month. Uh, it's definitely going to be a time where change is happening in those uh, areas of life, which are pretty big for you because they're all singular houses. So which means that they're your very important houses of yourself, your career, your home, and your family. But we will talk more about that. So don't worry. Um, make sure that you're subscribed to Aquarius so you can keep up with all of the videos that I do. I do more horoscopes throughout the month for the new and full moons, all of that. And I also do more stuff over on my Patreon if you're interested. But thank you guys for watching Aquarius. I really appreciate it. I hope you guys have a very insightful month full of healing. Just let me know down below if any of this ends up resonating. I'd really love to hear about it. And yeah, bye. Hi Pisces. I just got a new little light, my cute little light in the background. Wanted to try it out and I thought like, who better than to try it out for than Pisces? Cause I know you guys can appreciate it, right? Getting creative with my setup over here, okay? You gotta work with what you got. So anyways, Pisces, happy October. Let's get into your tarot and astrology reading for this month. Wow, uh, October is a hell of a month. Like I said last month, there's a lot going on. Okay, a lot going on in Pisces for you. This deals with a place for you that really is going to force you to clean a house, right? To really get rid of all of those deep, dark things that maybe you haven't been addressing, right? Uh, things from the past, debt. By the way, if the sound sounds a little bit different, I'm sorry. My, I can't use my mic right now because my phone's dying, so it's on the charger. Yeah, so debt money owed money that's owed to you a lot's coming up with that right now fears phobias you know your partner's money i mean this is the house of death and rebirth you know so a lot of healing could be happening right you could be really addressing things that have been kind of unseen or writing beneath the surface for a while but that need to come up for some reason or another. But what I do see that's really beautiful about this energy Pisces is that there may be some creative sparks that come up, right? Um, I think what's going to happen here, because we also have Ride the Wave, what I'm kind of getting here is that some things that need to be purged are going to come up. It could be financial, it could be with your partner, it could be something going on with them or their lives, but either way, it's like 
there's shit that needs to be done. There's shit that needs to be cleared out, cleaned out, that needs to be addressed, that needs to be worked through, right? You need to find some common ground if you can. If you can't, then it's time to move on. But you have to ride this energy wherever it takes you, right? You have to really listen to yourself this month. Any kind of nudge that you get from yourself, the universe, your intuition, whatever, you need to follow that this month, okay? I feel that a lot of you are possibly going to maybe be feeling a little bit more like this energy. Yes, it's kind of dark and deep and whatnot, but I also feel like it's really good for you because it's going to help you with your creative inspiration. It's going to help you feel more inspired. It's going to clean out you know, the shit so you can like move around and be more free, feel more free, you're going to be fine. You're going to be fine. You know what I mean? You just have to write it out. You have to do what needs to be done. You have to listen to yourself. You have to listen to your intuition. You have to listen to any nudges that you get and you're going to have to heal some things. You know what I mean? And healing isn't always easy, um, but it's worth it. It is so worth it. And it's such a beautiful experience. You know what I mean? It is such a beautiful experience to finally have that weight lifted off of your shoulders. And I think that is what you need to be thinking about. That is what you need to be focused on. Okay. For some of you, if you're married, I do see that your partner could be going through a hard time here this month, possibly financially with the Hierophant and the Five of Pentacles. For others of you, you could be dealing, you could be having some financial issues related to authority figures. Um, you also have the Strength card here, which tells me that you can handle this. You're going to get through it, right? You need to make sure that you're communicating with the right people. You need to make sure that you are sending the right messages, that you are uh, checking the details of things, that you are speaking up. Okay, there's going to be something this month that whatever this is, you're going to have to speak up. You're going to have to put action in, even if that means, you know, getting out of your comfort zone a little bit. Even if that means that you may be a little bit embarrassed, you have to put your pride aside and you have to be able to ask for help to make the phone calls you need to make, to send the emails you need to make, whatever the case may be. And I do feel like you're going to get through it. I feel like it's something from the past that you are... Like you learned your lesson, but for whatever reason, it's not all the way settled, okay? With the Six of Swords reversed and the Nine of Wands, okay? It's it's like you're going back to something. You're having to go back and address something that you have already learned your lesson for, so it can be frustrating. But in the end, it will be worth it because you will achieve what you want to achieve with this nine of wands here you will be more guarded you will know your shit you won't let people fuck with you anymore you or your partner won't if this is your partner for some of you you will know your boundaries basically right and that's going to be important know your boundaries stand your ground do what you got to do whoa 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 look at that okay so whatever this is pisces whatever this is we have the world so like i said you're finally completing that cycle. You're finally learning that lesson. We have the six of wands. You will make it through this. You will triumph. It's going to be okay, right? Page of Pentacles. you're going to make it right, right? There is a balancing out happening here. And for some of you, you may find a new job or a new source of income, or it could just be you know, that you are working on doing something new or learning something new. But either way, I feel that this looks really good. We like to see this, okay? What starts off this month that seems a little bit challenging or seems like, oh my God, I don't know if I can handle this or this is stressful. You have to step it up. You have to clean house. You have to ride the wave. You have to stand up for yourself you have to speak up. That is what this month is pushing you to do, Pisces. Even though you already did this or you've already, it's something from the past that you're having to readdress, right? And that you're scared for asking for help because you have your walls up, but it will work out. If you don't speak up, then it this may not be the same outcome. So remember that speaking up is going to be really, really important. 
this is speaking from your heart whatever you think it's gonna make you look like is not it's not what it is okay so just remember that by like mid to end month you will have a lot of this kind of smoothed over or you will find some kind of solution it just it may not always come in the form that you think it will and that's okay but something will rebalance those scales and yeah you just have to stand your ground like i said so other than that we have uh some important astrology going on this month some important dates are this libra new moon which is once again happening in your eighth house pluto goes direct around that time and the new moon is going to be conjunct mars for some of you this could deal with contracts legalities organizations it's definitely going to deal with other people i feel in some way like other people are going to be involved in whatever this is that you're going through and i know i'm kind of focusing on one situation but that seems to be the situation that's coming up here so i don't know if a lot of you guys if that's what's on a lot of your guys's mind um or if a lot of you guys will even resonate with this um this may just be for a few people i don't know but this is what is coming up and it seems important so um or at least important to someone so it, it's really important that you hold some kind of vision for yourself because we have the vision here um that you hold some kind of vision that you stay optimistic we also have aletheia okay pisces so we have aletheia here and i couldn't remember what this card was about because i haven't used this deck in a while i just started using it again recently you will never guess what this card stands for it stands for truth <laughs> So, our soul recognizes the truth. When someone speaks it, a cool wave of relief washes over the room and all the facts and figures in the world fall by the wayside. It has an undeniable resonance that goes beyond the rational. We can also recognize Aletheia by its contagiousness. When we hear someone speak the truth, we see the truth within ourselves and are more likely to tell our own story. The Aletheia card requires us to step, to step forward an act of truth. This might look like a, con a conversation, a gesture, a poetic act, or a ritual that honors the unveiling of what's been concealed. Reclaiming your own truth is a way to reclaim your vital energy, health, and sense of belonging in the world. Truth has its own wings. Set it free. Uh, so this is about clarity, re revelation, disclosure. So you may need to speak up. Like I was saying this month, it is time to be brave. It is time to speak up. It is time to speak your truth. It is time to um, step up to the plate because you may inspire others to do the same. And I honestly see it going really, really well. Okay, so there's something this month that is going to require you to be raw and real and honest and to put yourself out there in possibly an uncomfortable way. So um that is what i'm getting for you guys pisces oh your astrology almost forgot sorry um so on the ninth we have a mercury kazemi um this could be around that time that maybe you need to speak up around the ninth uh for that mercury kazemi venus is going to be conjunct the south node in your 10th house uh bringing back or bringing up possibly things from the past or old karma old karmic patterns something along those lines this may be a time that you have a revelation or that you have a moment of clarity or that some information comes to the surface or another option becomes available something like that so be watching out for around the ninth we also have the sun squaring pluto and then mars squaring pluto on the 13th through the 22nd and so this is happening from your 8th to your 11th house sector so once again this could involve networking friends organizations groups other people alliances versus possibly your partner's money finances things that are going on underneath the surface debt money owed to you money that you owe to other people that kind of thing so be watching out for that around that time frame we also have mercury and jupiter direct this could be another great moment around the 18th um forward moving energy some kind of truth coming out some kind of information coming out or things getting resolved in some way or starting to be resolved and then we have the full moon in aries on the 20th which i'm going to do a separate video on for um i'm going to go over all signs in that video like i always do so make sure you're subscribed so you will get that when it comes out 
And then on the 22nd, Venus and Sag will square Neptune in your sign. This could be some kind of illusion that you're kind of coming out of or some kind of reality that you're starting to see. For some, it could be something that you're not seeing clearly. So it could go either way. Um, so just pay attention from like the 22nd to the 26th of any like fantasy vibes or like ideally, like idealism, delusion, um, but also breaking out of a delusion in some way around that time. And then at the very end of the month from the 23rd to the 31st, we have the sun and Mars moving into Scorpio. The squares to Saturn will start and then the opposition to Uranus and Taurus. And so for you, Pisces, this is your ninth and third, also your 12th. So that will definitely be a massive time for information, belief systems, worldviews, things coming to light, education, learning, things like that, possibly things going on in your community, your neighborhood, Just a lot a lot of stuff coming at the very end of the month for everybody, but for you, it will deal with those themes, things kind of coming out from the dark, things kind of coming to light. So definitely watch out for that at the end of the month. But anyways, Pisces, thank you guys so, so much for watching this video. Please let me know down below if this reading and horoscope for the month of October resonated with you. It really helps me out when you guys give me your feedback as an astrologer. I really, really like to read it and it just helps me grow and learn more as an astrologer. So um, I will see you guys in my other videos. Bye. What's up Aries and welcome to your October 2021 Tarot and Astrology Horoscope. Let's get into it Aries. So uh, this October is a time for you that is very, very much about other people, relationships, and oh my gosh, the drama, right? Um, it could really feel like you are possibly having some struggles or some challenges come up in your relationships with other people, your marriage, if you're married, uh, it could definitely, it, it could definitely bring some some upheavals okay i'm not even gonna lie to you you know i'm gonna tell you it could be somewhat intense okay you could have some unexpected visitors from the past coming up you know and it may just feel like you're a little lost you know like you're not really sure where you're going you're not really sure how to move forward with a situation you're like in this balancing act you're trying to keep the peace or trying to be somewhat considerate of others, but it's just a mess, right? And so you're towing a very fine line here, okay? Um, I actually think that this balancing act card may actually be the advice, right? Finding a balance, and really that's what this month is about, you know, between self and other between you and others, between being considerate of yourself and being considerate of others, right? We also have mountain and listening. And so it definitely seems like, like I said, that there are some upheavals this month. Um, nothing you can't handle though, because you's a badass. Okay, you got this, strength on the bottom. We like to see that. Okay, you know you can do this, but there may be some challenges, okay? That's all I'm saying. But we also have listening. And so I think that this is a good month to kind of take the back seat for once, Aries. I know it's hard. I know it's hard. You want to be out front. You want to be leading the pack. But this is a month where it's like you just got to go with the flow, right? Because anything's possible. Things are coming up everywhere. And I know it can feel like there may be some stagnation or like you know some dryness some rough around the edges stuff but it you have to kind of find those like small moments of joy right we have the peaks of joy card um you have to find those small moments of joy you have to be willing to be a little bit more mindful this month be a little bit more aware uh, listen to others a little bit more rather than just, you know, doing what you want to do. Your ruling planet is in your opposite sign. Okay, this is rough. It's like, damn, but you feel like you're in a foreign country right now. You know what I mean? You feel like you're out of place. Uh, you're at your complete opposite 
at your complete opposites home, out completely out of your comfort zone. And so it's more important than ever to find a way to be you, but find a new way to do it, right? You got to get a little creative and innovative here, Aries. I'm not going to lie to you. You got to, you know, you got to walk the line. You got to toe the line of balancing between self and other. You can still find ways to have fun in that dry desert you can still find ways to um, laugh, to enjoy yourself, to not take yourself so seriously, to not be super impulsive about everything that you think or everything that you wanna call out because you may, it may not be what it appears to be right now, okay? So keep that in mind. It's gonna be easy for you to charge forward with something or for you to act on impulse, but Right now, strength is in your intellectual side. Strength is in thinking about things, being a little more strategic, right? Being a little bit more considerate, thinking logically, thinking critically, and not jumping the gun, right? So beginning of October, you could find that you're feeling a little bit impulsive or that you are possibly assuming something that may not necessarily be what it looks like or that some things from the past could come up that possibly get you going, but is it worth it? You know what I mean? That's really what you need to ask yourself. Is it worth it? So, like I was saying, the balance between self and other. Also the balance between your money and your partner's money or other people's money. There could be some financial things going on with you and your partner here. But where you are going to find peace is through love. And I know that sounds corny AF, but that's the truth here. Through going with the flow, letting go, following your heart, letting your heart lead the way and not your impulses, thinking things through, being considerate, trying to look at other sides of the situation and opening up emotionally. That is where you're really going to find the most joy in this month that's how you're going to get through this month aries without losing your absolute shit okay like that's how you're gonna get through this month i know there could be possibly some jealousy or some past issues coming up or some old pain coming up some old self-worth issues coming up um but you have to be patient and you have to remember how far you've come there could also be some things happening within the career, within your goals, your future, authority figures. But once again, it's going to be important to take your time, practice patience, and know what you want, know what you're building, and be open to other possibilities. Be open to what other people have to say. Listen a little bit more instead of speaking. Right? And I know that's hard because this is a month where you could find that you do want to say a lot of things, but this is a month that can teach you a lot, but you have to be willing to listen. This is a month where you can learn a lot, where you can actually turn it around and have a really amazing, insightful, and deeply transformative and healing time if you can listen if you can allow the lessons to teach you, allow the things coming up to flow and not try to, you know, barge in and change them or make them your way. Some other things that we have uh, going on this month, we have the Libra New Moon starting on the 6th. So um, up until the 6th, you may really be feeling that new moon energy. Pluto goes direct in your 10th. Uh, that's definitely going to be a shift regarding your career, your future, your public life, authority figures, what you want to do out in the world, all of that. And this Libra new moon on the 6th is going to be conjunct Mars, your ruling planet. Okay, so it's definitely going to be a time of new beginnings, a time of, you know, where you're wanting to start things, but you're having to consider others, right? Uh, there could be something coming up with your relationship around that time for interrelationship or just people in your life. 
So, but we'll go over that in the Libra New Moon video. Make sure you're subscribed so you'll catch your horoscope for the new moon. But, um, so yeah, and then Venus will move into Sag. That will be a time where you are starting to see the bigger picture, you know, where you're able to be a little bit more optimistic, where you are possibly wanting to learn something new, or you and your partner could be doing something new, learning something new, taking some kind of adventure. So yeah, but the first, like the 7th to like the 14th, could be like the first week of that could be a little bit rough because Venus will be um, on the south node in Sag and so there could be some past things coming up but it's in your ninth house so it may not be that bad right on the ninth we have the Mercury Cassini Venus exactly conjunct the south node so that could be somewhat of like a realization or some kind of information coming in um, or some news with your partner or with somebody in your life uh, either way or some kind of communication. Um, you could also have past people coming up in your life a lot this month, but there will be some kind of dot connecting or puzzle piece connecting uh, around the ninth. So watch out for that. Uh, on the 10th, Saturn will go to Rad. Saturn's been retrograding in your 11th house of friends, groups, social circles. So when Saturn goes direct, there will be a shift there, a forward momentum. And then also from the 13th to the 22nd, the Sun and Mars will take turns squaring Pluto in your 10th from your 7th. So this is where power dynamics and relationships could get brought up. You could start seeing something from another viewpoint or another side. Your partner could be going through something within their career or in their life in general. There could be some conflict and tension around that time, so you want to watch out for that. And there could also be some kind of unveiling or revealing around that time. So then on the 18th, Mercury finally starts moving forward. Jupiter moves direct as well on that day. So around the 18th, Aries, uh, you may see... You know, there could be some good news that comes in around that day, or there may be some optimism or starting to feel like you're moving forward in some way. And then we have a full moon in your sign on the 20th, which is going to be an intense one since Mars is in your opposite sign and starting to square Pluto in your 10th. Um, so that will be a little bit of an intense full moon. Um, and it will be showing you a lot about yourself, I think. And we'll go more over that in the Aries full moon video. But it will be like a new you around that time, I think. So then on the 23rd, we will have the sun in Scorpio uh, starting to square Saturn. And then on the 30th, Mars will be in Scorpio starting to square Saturn. And the sun by that time will be opposing Uranus. So basically from like the 23rd to the 30 to like the beginning of November, there will be some major stuff coming up for everybody for the world uh that will be a time where you could be trying to do something or wanting to do something but possibly feeling a little bit restricted or held back or there could be something coming up with your partner's money or finances or other people's money or finances um and possibly some some conflict or restriction to do with other people or groups of people or organizations. Um, we also have, you know, Mars getting involved as well and Uranus and Taurus getting involved. So there may definitely be some something that comes up around that time that feels restrictive regarding finances um, or money that you owe or money that's owed to you or your partner's money but something that you're trying to break free from, something that you're trying to get independence from or to be independent of or to break free of. So uh, you could notice themes like that around that time. Um, and we'll talk more about that once it gets a little closer. But anyways, Aries, that is what I have for you guys for the month of October. Hopefully this resonated for you guys. Definitely let me know down below. I love hearing your guys' feedback. It really just helps me out as an astrologer. I love to hear your guys' stories on what's happening and how this astrology ends up affecting you because it's just so fascinating to me and it helps me learn. So anyways, I will see you guys in my other videos. Bye. What's up, Taurus? Welcome back to the channel <laughs> and welcome to your October 2021 tarot and astrology video. 
I hope you guys are doing well this month. Let's get into your reading. October is a crazy ass month for everybody. So yeah, <laughs> we are starting a crazy ass fall. It's going to get really crazy this fall. So for you, Taurus, this October is all about work, health, the day-to-day -day things that you do to maintain your lifestyle, your life, all of those things. So you're really going to be seeing a lot of stuff come up in terms of your work, your routines, your health. You know, that's going to be a really big focus for the month of October. Things that need to be sorted out, things that need to be balanced out. You know what I mean? You could also be dealing with coworkers or people in the workplace or something going on in the workplace that you are trying to sort out here. So we have making a choice here. Uh, so you could be making some kind of decision or trying to weigh something out in terms of work and health or one or the other or something that you're having to do to maintain. Um, so those are some things that you could notice this month, but it seems like you're trying to make a really big choice. And I can tell you this, the choice is going to be really geared towards your strength, right? Um, it's going to require you to be strong, whatever it is, it's going to be track. It's going to be, requ it's going to require for you to stand in your integrity, whatever it is that you're doing. It may seem like you should do something to avoid conflict, or you should make a certain decision to avoid conflict or to avoid what other people are thinking or what other people think about you. I can't talk apparently. Um, but what this is about really is doing what's right for you and doing what's going to give you life in the long run, right? Um, doing what's going to nurture you the most and whenever it is, like you're gonna, whatever it is, you're gonna have to be strong, okay? Like it, it's really going to require your strength in making that decision. We, and I'm not talking about like physical strength. I'm, I mean, for some of you, it could be like, maybe you're starting to work out or, you know, change your diet and do something with working out. I don't know. But what I'm getting here, it's gonna involve some kind of internal strength on your part to make this decision or to actually follow through with it. But whatever it is, it's going to literally bring you back to life. You're going to feel so liberated from it it's going to start something in you that's like, that cannot be stopped. It's going to feel like so inspiring, okay? You're going to be really glad that you made it, I see here. It's going to kind of push you over an edge that once you're over it, you like realized that you needed to be pushed over it. Um, and then we also have the gentle gardener here, which basically means that you know, this is a time of really looking after yourself. This is a time of really protecting what's important, of, you know, harvesting what's important, harvesting what's of value, and really knowing what you want to take care of, you know, like really this could be like taking care of yourself, right? Doing things that are taking care of yourself, doing things that are taking care of the, the things that are important to you this month and some of that may be difficult or some of that may require some work but I know that you can do it. So what I see here Taurus is that you've been possibly not sure if you can trust in your intuition or trust in yourself. There's been something that you've been questioning or maybe that you've been staying silent about that you are really starting to see that it's so much bigger than you or that you can't stay silent about it anymore. And so there may be other people that disagree with you or it may feel like it may feel like the seven of wands, basically, where like you have to stand in your integrity. You have to stand in your truth, even if others don't agree, even if others don't like it. And so that is what's going to give you the most reward. That is what's going to give you the most fulfillment right we even just had the sun on the bottom there so this could definitely be something to do with your health your vitality your healing your fulfillment but you need to make sure that you stand up for yourself you need to make sure that even 
if others agree with you or don't agree with you or not, like you need to be there for yourself because guess what? They're not living your life. You are, right? You're the one living your life. And so you have to do what's right for you. For some of you, this could be also uh, standing up to someone from the past. For some of you, maybe not all of you, or facing something from the past. But yeah, with the Six of Cups here, I feel like, you know, you are doing yourself a favor. I don't know why I feel like that, but I just feel like you're doing yourself a favor where maybe you've been scared to speak up about something or you've been scared to trust your own gut feeling about something because of something that happened in childhood. Um, for some of you, you could be dealing with a couple people like in your workplace or somewhere in your life that are kind of like bullies or you could have dealt with that as a child. And this month, it's like you are finding your power. I really do feel like this is in the workplace though because we have the three of pinnacles here where maybe you feel like the odd one out in some way or like, you know, other people are not seeing things the way that you are. So yeah, and as I say that, we have the four of pinnacles reversed and the seven of cups. So you do wanna be careful this month, Taurus with your spending, you know, Venus is gonna square Neptune towards the end of the month from like the 26th, 22nd to the 26th. So you could find, and it's also gonna be on the south node for a little bit as well. You do wanna be careful. And that could be related to stress as well if you are doing that. I also see here for some of you, you could be letting go of something. Like I said, you're definitely standing up for something, but you could also be letting go of something in that process because of possible lies or things that aren't adding up, things that aren't making sense. And through that though, you're able to triumph. You're able to find success. You're able to um, find another chance at victory in a new way. Um, it just may, it, it just may be through actually walking away from something or taking action to get away from something or letting something go. Um, but through that, you'll be fine because we have the Ace of Pentacles and the Strength card. And so through sticking to your heart, through sticking to your integrity, through sticking to what you know is right, you are able to find stability. So for some of you, you could be like thinking about quitting a job or quitting a certain position or something along those lines. This definitely has a lot to do with your job because Capricorn is your ninth house so Aquarius is your 10th house. So yeah, you probably, there's a lot of stuff coming up with your job, career. Um, also with that Capricorn energy in the ninth house, there could be beliefs involved, authority figures, um, legal, legalities, contracts, or something along those lines, uh, politics going on in the job, things like that. So definitely, be on the lookout for those themes uh, this month. So other than that, Taurus, we have uh, the first like week of the month up until like the sixth is the Libra new moon. So that's gonna be pretty big. That's definitely gonna be a time where it's gonna be pretty apparent that there's some kind of choice that needs to be made. Uh, it's not gonna be something you can rush into though. So. Don't be scared to take your time. It may feel like you want to rush. It may feel like, and maybe some of you need to, maybe you need to, maybe that's what's going to be good for your health. I don't know. You know what I mean? It's going to be different for all of you, but it's going to feel like you may want to make an impulsive decision without thinking it all the way through just yet, because that Libra new one is going to be pretty intense. And then on the seventh, your ruling planet Venus is going to move into the sign of Sagittarius, which for you is your eighth house sector other people's money, your partner's money, uh, money that you owe or money that's owed to you, you know, things like that. So this could definitely be a big financial time where you may notice either you're trying to pay things off from the past or you're trying to make something right financially or your partner is. Something like that could be going on around that time, at least for the first like few days of Venus and Sag as she goes across the south node. So from like the 7th to like the 10th, you could notice some financial stuff coming up. But then on the 9th, we have the Mercury Kazemi in Libra. So there could be some information or some kind of light bulb or some kind of communication 
where you start like putting things together or putting puzzle pieces together, patterns are revealed, uh, where things are revealed in some way. And then on the 13th through the 22nd, we have the Sun and Mars taking turns squaring Pluto in your ninth house from your sixth house. So that's definitely gonna be a time where you're probably starting to feel like you need to stand up or you need to say something or you need to face something related to work, health, uh, you know, your job, belief systems, rules, things like that, that you could notice coming up. Then on the 18th, we have Mercury and Jupiter moving direct. There could be some more optimism around that time or some hope around that time, um, some kind of announcement around that time, but there's definitely gonna be kind of like a forward momentum. Then on the 23rd to the 30th, um, we will have, well, actually till like the beginning of November, we will have the sun moving into Scorpio and then starting to square Saturn and then Mars moving into Scorpio on the 30th and starting to square Saturn and then the sun starting to oppose Uranus. So, in your sign. <laughs> so your sign will be involved, your opposite sign will be involved and uh, Aquarius will be involved, which is your 10th house. So there could be a lot going on between you, your partner, or your relationship, or other people in your life versus your career authority figures, your public image, your reputation, your future goals, things like that. There could be some conflict or some tension arising um, in those areas of life. Watch out for those themes around that time. So let me go ahead and pick a card here since these cards are so hard to shuffle. Wow, all like, well, two really feminine cards. <laughs> So Taurus, you could be feeling a little flirtatious this month, or you could be feeling, you know, love could be on the brain for some of you, okay? Or sex, I mean, either or, but there is definitely like some temptation this month, um, <laughs> some love stuff going on, some sexuality stuff possibly going on, um, possibly wanting to resort to old behaviors for some of you but this is definitely a time where you're wanting to, you may be feeling like younger, you may be feeling like um, tempted to do some things, you know what I mean? And then we have the starborn and it's basically just like remembering who you are, you know, like remembering who you are, knowing that you're worth it, knowing because you have a high priestess here reversed, okay? So you're not trusting yourself right now with something. And I think it's like so important that you do that, that you realize your potential, right? Um, because you may not be right now, or at least in the beginning of the month, you may forget for a split second, okay? And then snap out of it and realize I'm a fucking badass and I got this, okay? So uh, that is what I'm getting for you guys, Taurus. Definitely let me know down below if this ended up resonating with you. I would love to hear your stories, your feedback. Um, I would really appreciate it. And yeah, I will see you guys in my other videos. Bye. Woo, Gemini, you guys are feeling stagnant, I see here. Wow. Welcome to your October 2021 reading, my lovely Geminis. What is going on with you guys? A lot of shit flying around, not sure which direction to take, not sure which way to go. I see here you're feeling very encouraged and you're being very encouraged either by others or the universe to do something, but you're trying to figure out either how, what, or where. <laughs> um, and so you're feeling a little bit lost. You're not sure. I do see that you're going to get clarity this month though, which is really good. So like I said, we have encouragement here for you. Really good. Um, you're feeling encouraged to do something. You're feeling like an urge to do something, but you're not sure what, you know, we have the compass here. So you're a little bit lost on which direction to go. You're not sure. And then we even have stuck in the mud, right? And so you're really feeling a little bit stagnant, a little bit stuck, not sure which direction to take, maybe feeling a little bit lost. This October is has a lot going on in your fifth house of like what you're passionate about, 
what you desire, what you want to do for fun, how you want to express yourself, creativity, children, all of that. So love and romance. So you could be feeling a little lost in terms of some of those things. But then we have the magical map shapeshifter, which I think is really interesting since all of this seems to be about direction. I think you're going to either change the direction that you're going in or you're going to find a new way to look at the direction. There is a shift happening in the way that you're going or within the path that you're taking that you're going to figure out this month. You're going to see that maybe you were doing it wrong or maybe you were going the wrong way. And I think that, you know, like we start off with the five of cups here, right? Feeling kind of discouraged on which direction to take the eight of wands and then we have the nine of swords it's like really stressing you out you're not sure which way to go with something and you feel maybe like you're even being rushed or like a ton of shit is kind of happening or being thrown at you but it's it's been really stressful you're not sure and you're just feeling stuck stagnant like you're not moving and so i think by slowing down Four of Swords, by slowing down, doing some meditation, doing some mindfulness, practicing awareness, getting your mind off the situation for a little bit, giving your mind a rest is going to bring new insight, Ace of Swords, right? It's going to bring some kind of new clarity, that new clarity that you've been looking for and that you need, right? Boom, Hermit, getting away, giving your mind a rest, getting some seclusion, allowing yourself to leave the situation for now because that is what is going to show you what you need to do. That is what's going to show you how to balance things out. That is where you're going to find your decision. And like I said, I think for you, it's gonna be another direction or a new path. I really do. Something that you're going to find a lot more empowering with the emperor here. Maybe by the Aries full moon happening on the 20th, you may be taking action. It's going to be important this month, Gemini, that you are really taking that break, that you are really giving yourself some space, giving yourself some time to for something new to arise because that is where creation happens. Creation happens in the dark, right? Like a baby in the womb. Like when you close your eyes to imagine something, right? Creation happens in the dark. And so you need to allow yourself to have that space for something new to form. You need to give yourself that space. And through that, something new happens. Something new is created. You are going through a lot of these Libra transits, like I said, in your fifth house of children, romance, fun, creation, hobbies, interests, where you find pleasure, where you find fulfillment and joy. And so you could see a lot of these themes coming up for the month of October, but also it's making squares to your eighth house of Capricorn. So there could be some financial stuff coming up or some, you know, money that you owe or that others owe to you coming up around this time, your partner's finances, if you're in a relationship, um, these kinds of things could be coming up that you could also notice as well. And towards the end of the month, you're really going to start noticing stuff coming up when it comes to your work and belief systems and where you envision yourself, where you want to go your potential um but that's going to be more towards the end of the month so some important dates to watch out for this month gemini are the around the 6th so leading up to the 6th of october which is when we have the libra new moon i'm going to do a whole horoscope on that so make sure you watch that for more details where i go over all the signs for the libra new moon but um that's going to be a wild new moon <laughs> conjunct Mars, Pluto goes direct, Venus is at 29 Scorpio. Yeah, that's going to be um, a pretty intense new moon. So 
uh, there could be something new kind of happening around that time or you may be trying to force something that is just not happening or that you're gonna have to come back to in some way so um, try to give it a rest you know what I mean try to just go with the flow it'll be okay we also have on the 9th the Mercury Cousini and Venus conjunct the South Node in Sag. You could get some clues or some information, some light bulb moments, some communication could come in that time. Um, and then Venus conjunct the South Node in Sag in your 7th house of relationships. Some past situations could come up in relationships or patterns that need to be addressed in relationships. So keep an eye on that. And then from the 13th to the 22nd, we have the Sun and Mars starting to square Pluto. Um, once again, from your 5th and 8th house. So once again, themes of fun, love, children, creativity, uh, passion versus finances, financial issues, death and rebirth kind of energy there. So... You know, it's really getting into things that may be hidden or things that you've been putting off that need to be dealt with, that need to be faced, right? Hidden truths that you need to be aware of. But this is the stuff that's blocking you or this is the stuff that's preventing you from moving forward. It's really like helping you find the middle ground between light and dark. And then on the 18th, Mercury finally goes direct. So it'll be going forward again. Jupiter goes direct that day as well. So around the 18th, there could be some news or an announcement, some communication, something like that, or just a forward feeling like a shift happening where you're feeling like, okay, finally moving forward in some way. And then on the 20th, we have that full moon in Aries that I mentioned before. And then towards the very end of the month, on the 22nd, we have Venus in your seventh house of relationships, squaring Neptune and Pisces. There could be some some things going on there <laughs> some things going on between your relationships and your future and how you're seeing that um could come up or you know some fantasy uh things that you may have not been seeing clearly could become more clear or you could not be seeing things clearly that's from like the 22nd to the 26th so watch out for that energy and then from the 23rd till basically november we will have the sun moving into Scorpio, Mars in Scorpio on the 30th, and they will start squaring Saturn and Uranus taking turns. So that is, like I was saying before, going to be a time where there's uh, possibly some tension between your work life or your health life versus belief systems, education, learning, politics, worldviews, things like that could come up. So you wanna watch out for those energies around that time, but we'll talk more about it as that gets closer. So anyways, Gemini, overall, I feel like October is a month where it's like time to go within. You may want to have fun and like mingle with people, but I feel like you're just, there's too much on your mind and you're needing to take a rest. You're needing to go within. You're needing to take a step back. If you're feeling kind of creatively blocked or not sure how to move forward with something, take a step back from it, let it go for now. It will come to you when it's supposed to, okay? So that is what I have for you, Gemini. Definitely let me know down below if this ended up resonating. I'd love to know. And I will see you guys in my other videos. Bye. Hello, Cancer darling, and welcome to your signs reading for the month of October 2021. Uh, this will resonate uh, if you are a Cancer rising sun or moon, but the astrology portion will resonate more for your rising sign. So do keep that in mind. So Cancer, October is a wild month. There is so much being exposed, so much coming to light, so much that you're noticing that you didn't notice before so much that you're seeing that's been hidden from you or so much being revealed about certain patterns in your life certain family members certain things from your past as well you know like all kinds of things are being revealed to you and this is a time where you are really being guided to take a look at the dynamics with those that are close to you with you know you're really being guided to take a, another look at things in a new light 
And you're also being guided, Cancer, to take care of yourself too. You can't constantly be doing for other people. You can't constantly be focused on what was or the what ifs or what could have been or what should have been. You know, this is a time where you are really seeing how much you have had to compromise, how much you have had to mediate, especially in certain family situations certain living situations or certain situations with people that are close to you. You have invested a lot, a lot in these people and these situations. Um, and it's time for you to really fill your own cup, right? It's time for you to let go, to renew, to uh, allow yourself to be empowered through the obstacles, be empowered through the struggles. I see here, Cancer, that you are really concerned about home issues, family issues, material issues, relationship issues, possibly money or work issues as well. Um, stability and security issues really uh, kind of sums it up a little bit better. I see that you are, because we have the golden uh, palace here reversed and so I feel like this may be a time where you are kind of feeling like you've fallen off your throne a little bit in some area of your life where you are worried about a sense of security where you are worried about a sense of feeling safe feeling comfortable you know you are worried about your foundation and what's holding you up the foundation of your life the foundation of yourself the foundation for your family the foundation for your relationship the foundations are really really big this month cancer and although you may not be feeling although you may not be feeling like you did uh, at one point in time or you may not be feeling necessarily uh, on your throne at this time or on your high horse at this time. Um, this is a really valuable teaching moment for you where you are really getting to see cancer that not everything needs to be, uh, needs to be there. And through this experience, you are being liberated. Okay. Uh, so I'm going to actually read you this card because I feel like it, I'm still learning this deck, but I feel like there's more in here that you need to hear. So the reversed meaning of this card says, let go of your tight hold on what you believe security should look like. Now is the time to cons conserve your energy and count your blessings. Resist the pool to become miserly. There will be enough money, love, youth, food, and shelter to go around. A mindset of fear and lack will shut off the flow of true abundance. Trust in the tides, because the flow always returns from the ebb. Chop wood, carry water, as the Chinese proverb says. Practice faith and, and the treasure will be revealed. In fact, you'll find it in plain sight. So it's really showing you a different way to look at abundance, a different way to look at lack, a different way to look at any fears you have around security or you know, stability. And so this is a month where you could definitely find those themes coming up, Cancer. We also have Gentle Gardener here. And this card is really about, you know, finding pleasure in the little things, gently putting time and energy and effort into what is of value to you right now. That is what is important right now. You know, finding pleasure, finding joy in those small things, um, those small wins can be so, so helpful right now. And really making sure that you're taking care of yourself. Okay, really making sure that you're taking your time, that you're doing the things that need to be done to take care of you. Um, that's all you can do. Everything else, it hasn't happened yet, right? It's all what ifs. It's all, oh my gosh, what if this happens? Or, oh my gosh, what about this? Or what if this happens from the past? You know, like everything else, let it go because you are really being pushed into an energy this month, Cancer, where it really is about focusing on gardening, but more so metaphorically in your life. What needs to be gardened? What needs to be planted what needs to be ripped up you know and that is really this month for you that really sums up this month for you we also have one ring circus and so some of this could be 
something to do with independence, something to do with, uh, you know, doing things yourself in one in some way. You could be feeling possibly a little bit lonely or a little bit misunderstood, especially when it comes to family drama or family stuff going on. You know, you could really feel like there's something unfair or uh, biased going on within your family, you know, with Mars in your fourth house and all of this Libran energy, you know? And so there's definitely a lot here going on with your family, possibly power dynamics, possibly control issues uh, in relationships, uh, as a lot of this Libran energy is squaring Pluto and your opposite sign in your seventh house of relationships and commitment. So do you keep that in mind? Uh, but I think what is coming up this month is really kind of putting you in a position to face things, to find your power, to uh, face things that you've been hiding from because we have the Moonlight card here, which is about facing the shadow, things coming out of the shadows and you trusting your intuition, you trusting in the hunches that you have because they're correct right? Your intuition is going to be extremely strong this month and you may even be feeling that. Um, and it's trying to tell you something. It's trying to show you the way. It's trying to show you what you, what needs to happen. You know, it's trying to show you what you're not seeing, right? And so you really need to trust in those gut feelings. You really need to trust in those intuitive hunches or, uh, you know, any kind of random feeling that you have coming up that may be um kind of out of the norm that you may not be understanding or knowing what to do with so this is really interesting we have the emperor and the empress reversed coming up here so it seems to me cancer followed by the Eight of Swords reverse, it seems to me that some of you could be moving on from a relationship with someone um, that is not, that has maybe become either all about them or it just, it's not bringing you joy, harmony and pleasure anymore or stability or security. Um, and for some of you, this could just be a boss as well or it may not be i mean i feel like for a lot of you it's some kind of relationship in your life and you're starting to see clearly with this eight of swords reverse you're starting to get out of this illusion or this blindness of not seeing it clearly um for some of you it could be a job but either way uh i feel like you are definitely seeing things for what they are. It's like the fantasy that you've possibly been under or that you've been telling yourself or that you've shut yourself, you know, you've like shut yourself off from the truth in some way or you've been in some kind of illusion. And now this month, you're seeing it for what it is, right? And you know, you know that you can do better, whatever this is. We also have the Hierophant, Hierophant here and the Nine of Cups. And so you're definitely seeing things, you know, you're definitely seeing things that are not as fulfilling as they could be, right? You're definitely seeing the truth about possibly even some belief systems or, uh, you know, something along those lines or certain people, certain people in powerful positions, authority figures, things like that are being revealed to you. And this month i think is about getting really strategic with the queen of swords and the magician here about what it is that you want okay um for some of you there could be something revealed to do with escapism in somebody with the moon and the nine of cups um and i feel like it could either be you or someone else but i feel like you're trying to get more spiritually fulfilled you're trying to get back into some kind of spiritual connection rather than escaping uh something that you don't want to face and so you're having to take a really hard look at your beliefs cancer your conditioning uh you know you're having to take a really hard look at your your mind frame your philosophies on life your views your world views you know what i mean your your spiritual views your beliefs and this is going to lead you 
to a new way of thinking where you see that you are the creator of your perception, where you, where your perception is the creator, right? The magician and the queen of swords here, where you are seeing that you have the tools to change this way of thinking, to change this way of perceiving, um, and to change these connections that are part of some kind of past conditioning or change these dynamics and relationships and family in your life that are part of some kind of past conditioning. So those are some of the things that uh, I see here for you in your cards, Cancer. It's very, very interesting. Well, on to your astrology portion. I've talked about a lot of it already, but um, we have a lot going on this month, right? It's Libra season. We have a lot in the sign of Libra, which like I said, is your fourth house of home, family, property, living situations, um, your past, your childhood, things like that. So there could be a lot coming up with those kinds of things. Also people that you're close to your private life, what's going on behind the scenes, behind closed doors. Uh, those are going to be really big things this month for you. And you really trying to figure out how to consider, uh, other people while also considering yourself, you know, like, are you considering other people too much? Are you not putting yourself first? Are you um, bending to make other people happier to keep peace in certain family situations that are really just bringing you down? You know what I mean? Are you, do you need to defend yourself? Do you need to defend something? Do you need to stand up for yourself? Do you need to speak up or speak your truth in some way uh, to certain family members, right? This is gonna be really big this month. Uh, Venus moves into Sagittarius around the 7th and then around the 9th, we have the Mercury Kazemi with Venus conjunct the South Node. So that's gonna be kind of a big time. Um, with Mercury and the Sun meeting up in Libra with Mars there, there could definitely be some big moments of clarity where you are seeing past patterns, where you are seeing certain things regarding, uh, you know, regarding family, but also how it may be affecting your day-to-day -day life, your health, your physical vitality, or your work, you know what I mean? So um, those could definitely be some things that come up or some patterns that come up that you that are starting to be revealed to you or some truth that comes up that's starting to be uh, revealed to you. So then we have Saturn moving direct in your eighth house. So uh, this is going to be a time where if you've been really reflecting or reviewing certain things regarding your finances, your debt, anything that you owe or anything that you're investing in, any kind of transactional monetary relations um, or uh, transactional relations to do with resources, like any resources that you're involved with with others or money that you're involved with with others in any way. If you've been really kind of moving backwards there or reviewing there or trying to make things right there once Saturn moves forward, um, you know, mid month, but we may start, we may not start feeling it to like the end of the month, but either way, there may be um, more of like a, a forward momentum there. But there are definitely major truths being brought up uh, in your family this month, Cancer. I mean, that is like the really, really big deal because then around the 13th through the 22nd, the sun and Mars will take turns squaring Pluto uh, in your seventh house. And so there will definitely be a lot of light being shed on relations, commitments, and uh, family, right? So, uh, you know, there could be a lot of relationship dynamics coming up, issues with relationship dynamics, issues with your role in relationships, issues with needing to talk about something or something from the past or some kind of pattern coming up to do with your relationships and your family or those that are very close to you that feel like family, you know what I mean? So um, you definitely want to watch out around that time. There could be some conflict, unfortunately, some, you know, drama or some controversy, taking things to extremes. So you just want to watch out around that time, um, you know, from the 13th to the 22nd could be a little bit intense for you, specifically cancer, since this is happening in your angular houses, which are really big houses in the birth chart. Okay. So, um, 
On the 18th though, we have Mercury and Jupiter moving direct. So there could be possibly, you know, around the 18th sometime, there could be possibly maybe some kind of good news or some kind of optimism, some kind of hope that is restored in some way, um, some kind of conversation or moment of clarity, something like that, that helps you start looking forward or looking at the bigger picture. Um, on the 20th, we have a full moon in Aries, which I do separate videos for the signs on the new and full moon. So make sure that you are subscribed and your notifications are on because uh, the new and full moon this month are really, really big. So you don't want to miss your horoscope for those. And then um, we also have on the 23rd, the sun will move into Scorpio, which is your fifth house of love, romance, children, joy, um, sexuality, those kinds of things. So, but it's going to start squaring Saturn um, in your eighth house. So there may be some challenges between what you love or having fun versus um, certain responsibilities or certain financial obligations or restrictions um, or your partner's finance, financial obligations and certain restrictions with that. So there could be some stuff that comes up there. You could be feeling like maybe there's something that you really want to do um, that will bring you joy, but maybe there's certain, certain conflicts with financial interests so you're struggling or there could be something going on if you have children that maybe need some extra help financially around that time or there may be a struggle there in some way. And then Mars moves into Scorpio and starts squaring Saturn on the 30th. So this will move into November and we will talk about this over the next couple weeks. So make sure you're subscribed because those are some really big transits. So anyways, Cancer, that is what I'm seeing for you guys for the month of October. Hopefully this ended up re resonating. I think that this month is really about addressing uh, the faults in your foundation that are really keeping you from being able to live your life uh, with who you are, like live your life for who you are, and also allowing you to kind of embrace some kind of independence, some kind of freedom, some kind of um, forward momentum that is not going to keep you constantly going back into the past or like refiguring out these patterns to do with constantly having to consider others in the family or compromise or you know keeping the peace to where it ends up coming back on you in some way so um yeah i can't wait to hear how your guys's month goes down below make sure you let me know and i will see you guys in my other videos bye what's up my lovely leos welcome to your october 2021 tarot and astrology reading so leo October is not coming to play with our asses, okay? There's so much going on in the month of October. It is insane, okay? But what's really happening here, Leo, is you are recognizing certain past patterns that are no longer in alignment with who you are. Um, you may see in the month of October certain situations, certain people, certain things coming back around that are very familiar. It's like, oh, I've been here before. I've done this before. I've been in a situation like this before. This seems familiar. Something along those lines. And this is happening for you to see that you've learned the lesson, right? Like with Mars in our third house, we are we are knowing how to go about things in an elegant way, but at the same time, we also know like when we need to speak up and be more direct about shit, when we need to take the lead. And so this is a time where we are really recognizing certain old cycles or certain old habits that we used to fall in, certain old situations like that are ringing a bell, you know? And we're also being asked to get out of our comfort zone, to take some kind of leap, to go into some kind of unknown thing that may seem a little bit like scary for us, you know? And I'm saying that because we have the dragon's layer here, which also all of this really aligns astrologically for Leo as well. But the dragon's layer is about, you know, knowing that we're protected and taking some kind of risk, getting out of our comfort zone, uh, being led to do something 
that we feel we must, that we know may be risky, that we know is somewhat unknown, but we are being challenged basically, right? Like we are facing some kind of big challenge that really allows us to grow from it, right? It's like that feeling when you get into some kind of new relationship and you are like, oh my gosh, this could end badly, uh, but it may not, you know what I mean? Like I'm scared, but I'm also excited. That's this kind of energy that's coming in the month of October. It's like moments of clarity are coming for us, Leo. Um, and I'm saying us because I'm a Leo rising, where we are starting to see clearly, we are starting to see our desires clearly because we have the wishing well after that and this is really about seeing our desires clearly setting intentions seeing what we want and where we're going it's like we are finally getting unstuck but to do that we must go deep within and find our truth and that is what this energy is pushing us towards if you are feeling stuck in the month of october with dry desert here if you're feeling stagnant if you're feeling like okay, you know, something's going to arise to get you unstuck, but you have to be the one that takes that move. You have to be the one that takes that step. You have to get out of your safety net, to get out of your comfort zone, to handle things in a different way, to stand up for yourself, to assert yourself more, right? You know, this month is showing us a lot about our alliances. This month is showing us a lot about people in our lives, our environments, who we surround ourselves with, the places that we surround ourselves with. This is showing us a lot about friends and our social life. Um, this is showing us a lot about the location we live in or the community. Uh, there could also be, we could also be seeing things going on with our siblings, cousins, or dif di uh, distant relatives. And also, Leo, this is a month where some of you, especially if you're a Leo rising, may be experiencing some stuff coming up with like, travel or transportation or car trouble so i do just want to put that out there make sure that you're being safe this on a month like this with all of this energy in libra in our third house just make sure that you are uh really being aware of your movements right that's what really this is this is saying i believe so I think that we are really recognizing familiar patterns. We are recognizing traps. We are really seeing, we are really gathering information about what it is that we want to do, what it is that we want to learn, where it is that we want to go, where it is that we are going. You know what I mean? Because we have this card, the talisman here, um, and I'm still learning this deck, but what it says in the book is like so freaking interesting. So it says a lesson truly learned is crystallized as earned wisdom. You have all you need for the success you seek. So it says wisdom allows you to recognize traps on the road and familiar patterns that you want to avoid. It also enables you to quickly gather information about where you are on your journey. It helps you recognize your allies and know how to find the best routes along the way. Now you're at a place where you know the right thing to do and the best choices to make. You really can't commit a mistake. Whatever your inquiry, great fortune awaits you for you have the wisdom to arrive at the right decision. You've learned your lessons and earned the right to your success. So I'm also getting out of that, that it's like we are breaking out of old conditioning, old mind frames. As I'm saying that the judgment card comes out reversed. We are breaking out of old conditioning, old mind frames, old ways of judging things and judging ourselves, old opinions, you know, and we're really seeing where we need to be more focused. We need to be more clear-minded about something. We're really remembering old patterns and old situations. And that's coming up for us to say, okay, yeah, I'm doing this differently. I'm going to do this different this time. And it's forcing us to go within and find our truth. Um, it's forcing us to go within and figure out what it is that we really want, what it is that we are moving towards. And if we still want to move towards that, is it worth something, right? Or are we just kind of moving, but just lost, you know? And so um, I think there is going to be a lot coming up when it comes to possible conflicts as well in some regards. 
involving power dynamics or authority in some way as well for some of you because we have the emperor and the five of wands here coming up so i think that there could be a lot of conflict or you could be witnessing or seeing a lot of conflict at least regarding power dynamics power struggles things like that authority something along those lines and then we also have the two of cups here reverse so honestly some of you guys could be struggling with relationships um, in some way shape or form possibly due, due to finances or due to feeling like you're putting in a lot of energy but maybe not getting a return in some way because we have the two of cups reversed with the uh, seven of pinnacles here leo so this definitely may be showing us where where we are feeling a little bit stagnant or feeling like you know we're having a hard time relating to someone in our lives it could be a friend a lover a family member uh but we're having a hard time being kind of like fair or finding a way to compromise the give and take may be a little bit unbalanced or uneven you know it may not be it may not be feeling fair in some way this month and that's going to be something that you're really reflecting on that I really see could start coming up for you probably from the seventh onward as Venus moves into your fifth house and also Saturn in our seventh of relationships moves direct uh, on the tenth. So there definitely could be some relationship stuff coming up here. Um, so it's way too many cards, so I'm not going to take those, but I see that you're trying to do the right thing. You're trying to make the right decision this month with something, but you need to really make sure that you're considering everything with the Queen of Swords here. Um, and you also need to trust yourself. You know what I mean? You need to be logical. You need to be real with yourself. You need to be honest and truthful with yourself. That's going to be very, very important this month. It does look like you are really noticing things from your past this month because we have right after the Queen of Swords, we have the Six of Cups. So it does really look like you are uh, becoming aware of things from the past or of, um, you know, you're, you're starting to see truths about certain things um, from the past or certain people in your life or siblings, family, something along those lines and seeing the truth about what it is that you want, what it is that you're trying to fulfill. Uh, so we also have the Empress reversed and the Three of Pentacles. And what I'm kind of getting from this, Leo, is really finding your passion again, where at some point maybe you kind of lost a uh, passion for something or at some point you kind of lost the uh the desire for something and so where in your life are you doing things that are not bringing you some kind of fire some kind of passion some kind of love some kind of joy um because we also have the page of wands reversed after that and so and i think once again with venus moving into sagittarius in your fifth house you're really seeing um you're really seeing how maybe either you stop doing things that you were passionate about or how you have possibly lost passion for something. And so, and it could be because you're so focused on other things. You're so focused on the money or, you know, the the value or the long term or the future that you're unable to really enjoy what it is that you love to do. And that could also be something that is coming up for you this month. So then we have the four of cups and the five of wands. And so and I really feel like this goes with this dry desert card. It's like you get to a place where you feel kind of dried out, burnt out, whatever. And it's like, by the time you are actually getting what you wanted, it's like, do I even want this anymore? And so my advice here for you, Leo, is to really look around this month and find a way to, and I think I was just telling Cancer this, but find a way to find that joy in the things that are going on around you. Find a way to get down inside of yourself, to get to the truth, to get to what is drying you out or burning you out so much. Um, to get to what it is that you want. You could be feeling, uh, there could be some jealousy as well, unfortunately here <clears throat> for some of you, 
maybe not all of you, but for some of you, there could be some jealousy. You could feel like you're competing and that could be really taking away from your passion about something or your passion about what it is that you do for work if you're doing something for work that you're passionate about or working on some kind of project. But it, it's really important that you, you know, because in a desert, like if like metaphorically speaking, like if you're by yourself in a desert, you're like the only one there for like miles, right? There's not a lot going on around you. And so maybe you need some space, you know, maybe you need that space to go within yourself to figure out what's going on with you, to see things in a new way, to see things from a higher viewpoint, to become adaptable. Like there is definitely some kind of challenge coming up here that may be a little bit thrilling, exciting, or risky, but at the same time, you have to learn how to adapt. You have to learn how to keep going um, until you get to where you're trying to go on this journey. You have to keep it moving. You know what I mean? Yes, you can take some time. Yes, you can take a break. Yes, you can take some space for yourself. Like with the talisman here, do you remember what you've learned in the past? Do you remember what you are, you know, do you remember the patterns and do something differently? You know, that's really what I'm seeing here for you, Leo. So let's, um, just wanted to get a few more cards here yeah wow okay so there definitely is some patterns some toxic patterns that could possibly be revealed to you this month with the devil and the seven of swords here you could be really kind of focused on doing the right thing in a certain situation or keeping your integrity in a certain situation this month those things could come up as well and you could feel like maybe others around you are not in some way um and so it may be time to really just focus on you and do what you value. You know what I mean? I know it can be hard, but it's definitely like this month is definitely teaching you some valuable lessons and see, there you go. Showing you that you have what it takes, that you have the resources that you need. You have the tools that you need. You know, you just have to be strategic. You have to be strategic on where you're putting your time and energy and you have to be able to hone in on you and stop worrying about what other people are doing um that's going to be really really big this month for you leo do not fall back into the traps of the past um whether it's with a work situation a hobby or whatever this is about don't fall back into those vicious patterns do the challenging new thing you know what i mean that is what i'm seeing for you in regards to your cards leo Let's go over your astrology really quick and the important dates of this month and how you may, some themes that you may be seeing come up with those. So the very beginning of the month, you're going to be feeling that Libra new moon energy, which is in your third house. So this is definitely going to be a time where you could be speaking up about something, defending some kind of truth, um, doing something with your community, your siblings, relatives, um, cousins, neighbors, your relationships or friends or certain acquaintances, and where you are also seeing uh, certain patterns that are possibly coming back around for you to address in a different way for you to move forward instead of repeating them um so definitely watch out for that in the very beginning of the month venus is going to move across your south node or not your south node i'm sorry the south node in the sky so once again more patterns more past karmic stuff coming up in terms of fun, pleasure, indulgence, love, romance, sexuality, children. It'll be a beautiful energy once Venus passes the south node, but at first you could notice a certain sense of maybe wanting to be a little bit careless or reckless or maybe wanting to overindulge, um, maybe wanting to escape something or find like a false sense of security. So you want to be careful of that from like the seventh to like maybe the 10th or 11th, because those are the kinds of energies that could come up. Now with, um, after that we have on the 9th, the Mercury, Sun and Mars Kazemi with Venus exactly conjunct the South Node. This could definitely be a moment of realizations um, or a time of really big realizations, a time of reflecting on decisions from the past, making certain decisions or how to move forward with something, how to address something, a lot of light bulb moments, connecting the dots, past situations resurfacing for you to see in a new light uh, are gonna be really big around that time. 
So then on the 10th, Saturn moves direct, like I was talking about before, uh, which could bring up some themes going on in your relationships where you are figuring out if maybe something needs to change in your relationship or if you're willing to take on more commitment or responsibility in your relationships. And then on the 13th to the 22nd, we have the Sun and Mars taking turns squaring Pluto from your third to your sixth house. So this could definitely be some lifestyle changes um, that come up. This could be some motivation to make really big changes in regards to your health or certain health issues that may come up, your diet, uh, exercise, or work. Um, but either way, you are definitely possibly making some big changes around that time or feeling motivated to. Um, there could be some challenges though with that. So be careful with that um, just because it's a square. So there may be some challenges or some intensity that come up between uh, your day-to-day -day life, your routines, your health, your work, communication, appointments, community environment, uh, siblings, neighbors, uh, just those kinds of things, you know, where you're kind of expressing yourself and the environment in which you're around, the people in which you're around, friends, um, something could happen with those themes around that time. So just make sure that you're being on the lookout for that. Now on the 18th, we have Mercury and Jupiter going direct, okay? And so um, around that time period, or maybe a few days after, you could start feeling maybe like more optimistic, more hopeful, looking more at the big picture. There could be some kind of communication co that comes in or uh, some kind of message or announcement that comes in, some kind of information that comes in that really helps you to start moving forward with something or clear the air in some way. And on the 20th, we have a full moon in Aries in your ninth house of belief systems, higher learning, worldviews, politics, religion, all of those kinds of things. So you may notice things coming up around that around then, but we're gonna do a whole separate video on horoscopes for the new and full moon this month. So make sure to check those out when those come up. And then on the 22nd or around the 22nd, like the 22nd to the 26th, you do wanna be careful, Leo, because Venus in your fifth house in Sagittarius is going to be squaring Neptune in your eighth house in Pisces. There could be some overindulgence themes here again with this or addressing something that is not necessarily real in some way. So kind of unrealistic ideas or idealism or fantasizing about something that may not be healthy or could be trouble in some way. So you do want to watch out for that around that time. There could be something going on that is just a straight lie or may not be what it seems. So, and it could involve um, finances in some way or something deep going on underneath the surface. So uh, watch out for that time frame. Towards the end of the month, we have some more challenging aspects here as the sun will move into Scorpio, start to square Saturn and Aquarius from your fourth to your seventh, which is a really big deal. So you are going to be feeling some tension arise between your home life, your family, your past, your childhood, your foundations, your private life, and your relationships, friendships, one-on-one um, -on -one connections and commitments with other people. So there could be some tension in there. You may feel kind of stuck or responsible, like you're carrying some kind of burden in your relationship or your partner could be feeling that way or someone in your life could be feeling that way. And there could be some kind of conflict there to do with your home, family life, etc. cetera. So watch out for that because then Mars is gonna come into Scorpio on the 30th and start squaring Saturn as well. Um, but we will definitely be talking more about that as the month goes on and as that time comes. So yeah, those are the key dates to watch out for this month, the key time periods. It's definitely a big month, but it looks like you're going to grow so much from it, Leo, and realize so much from it and have a lot of deep realizations and be able to take a new path that is possibly a little bit scary, but also exciting. So I will see you guys in my other videos. Thank you guys so, so much for watching. Please comment down below and let me know if this ends up resonating and yeah. What's up, Virgo? Welcome to your October 2021 tarot and astrology reading. Let's go ahead and get into it. So October is a very crazy month for everybody, okay? For the collective, we have 
so much going on in the month of October and a lot appears to be going on for you too, Virgo, as we are in Libra season and we have a lot of these Libra placements in your second house, which means you are going to be seeing a lot coming up with finances, resources, financial matters, spending, spending habits, anything that supports you and your lifestyle, possibly your partner's uh, money or resources or uh, certain relationships that you have in your life that you feel are supporting you or your lifestyle. And so there's a lot coming up here that you are kind of looking at in the month of October and trying to find a way to mediate, trying to find a way to compromise or figure things out. And I do see here in your cards that you are also being asked to look at past conditioning where you've been conditioned to go about something a certain way, to believe something, to perceive something a certain way that you may not notice at first or that you may have not noticed until this month where you are really being asked to look at how you're perceiving situations and how you are subconsciously reacting to situations and what you are subconsciously doing. Because we have the bone collector, which is about your conditioning, your foundations, the wounds in life that you had that have shaped you to perceive things in a certain way or to perceive that you can't do something that maybe you can um, or that you you know, should act a certain way or should do certain things that maybe really are holding you back or are just creating more problems for you. And then right after that, we have the Moonlight card, which is about your subconscious mind and uh, also intuition and really trusting your intuition, things being revealed to you from the darkness. And so I think this month you are really going to see where you are acting in certain ways or reacting in certain ways that are causing issues for you. You're doing it in a subconscious way though, so it, you know, it may not be apparent to you at first why this is happening, but these cards are saying to look inside, to look at why you are perceiving things a certain way, why you are having these certain um, realizations about things or these intuitive hunches about things. That's going to be really, really big in the month of October. Now, we also have metamorphosis and sad embrace, which tells me that you're definitely going to be going through some change in the month of October. Some shadow work is definitely coming up here where maybe you have been under some kind of illusion or maybe you have not been seeing something clearly or maybe you end up going through some kind of lack or some kind of situation that causes you to go through a massive change when it comes to who you are or your lifestyle, your life in general, your finances, your money, your income, you know, something along these lines is going like you're you're definitely going through some kind of change. And these cards are basically saying that even though you're in a catharsis kind of state this month, it's so, so important to allow yourself to feel the things that you're feeling in order to heal, um, to really allow yourself to process these things, to allow yourself to face these things that maybe you've been blind to for a while, right? Um, but we do end with the field of dreams, which tells me that this will help you in recreating and reimagining, re-envisioning what it is that you want, what it is that uh, you actually want. So what I'm kind of getting here, Virgo, basically, is that something that you want or that you have been really looking forward to or really excited about or something that you've been trying to go for may not quite work out the way that you had intended or you may have not been seeing it quite the right way because we start off with the seven of cups here which tells me that maybe you were kind of over idealizing a certain situation and then we have the five of pinnacles here which really correlates with that kind of like you know maybe something was lost or something didn't work out the way that you had expected or planned and you didn't you know it, it didn't pan out the way that you thought it would. And so 
that's kind of where we're starting in the beginning of the month where you're really kind of realizing, okay, I need to kind of hammer down. I need to look at this in a new way, which really causes you to start rethinking things. This four of swords here, it start, causes you to start reflecting and Mercury is retrograding in your second house as well. So you really are reflecting on, you know, what it is that you want what it is that you want for your future with the queen of pinnacles here what it is that you want to build uh what security and resources mean to you what stability means to you what is of value what's important right and how can you um attain that more or how can you embrace that more in some way and then we also have the devil coming right after that which i think is really talking about this unearthing of these certain toxic ways of thinking or these certain conditioning patterns that maybe you've been stuck in. Um, you know, this, this thing that you've been almost doing to yourself that deals with your perception in some way, because then we have the moon and the two of swords, where it's like maybe you've been not wanting to look at something and that becomes very, very apparent. Uh, in the month of October, something is definitely coming to light here. Something is definitely revealed to you about something that you've been trying to smooth over or something that you've been avoiding or trying not to look at. And I'm saying that because she has the blindfold on, right? It's like something that you've been blind to, maybe not necessarily purposely. For some, it could have been purposely. You could have been like not looking at it on purpose, but this month, it's definitely going to bring that up for you to address it. Like I said, it could involve your resources, your finances, anything that's really close to you and supports you and the kind of life that you're living or for you to do what you want to do, a relationship, something along those lines. Where have you been maybe escaping something, overindulging or, um, you know, partaking in patterns that are actually somewhat self-sabotaging and aren't really actually helping you. That's gonna be really, really big this month. So then we have the Eight of Cups. So it seems like, you know, this is where you begin to heal. This is where it's like, yeah, I really wanted this or, um, you know, I thought this was gonna be really fulfilling, but it may not be, you know what I mean? And so I have to kind of, move on, I have to kind of move forward. Now, it doesn't mean that you're not gonna get what you originally wanted, it just means that, you know, for some of you, it may be something brand new, but for others of you, it's like, you need to surrender, you need to look at this from a new perspective, you need to take some time and reflect before making uh, any big decisions, because if you try to act out of impulse, you're going to end up just, you know, feeling stuck again, or feeling like, your hands are tied, you know, like you can't. And so, um, so yeah, you need to take your time with this. You need to move towards what it is that, you know, you actually are envisioning for yourself. You know, whatever this new vision that appears is, is going to be where you're moving towards. So anyways, um, you may be feeling rushed, you know, but it's going to be important to take your time is basically all I'm saying. I also could see some of you actually moving or actually traveling or actually going on some kind of trip, like some kind of physical movement in some way. So that could be it as well. Or there could be something going on uh, with transportation or your car or something like that towards the end of the month. So then we end with the Two of Pentacles and the Emperor. And so it seems like towards the end of the month, you're starting to kind of toss around uh, kind of this new, like some kind of new ideas about what it is that you want to do, whether for work or, um, you know, something that's going to give you independence, something that's going to give you some kind of freedom. You could be doing, uh, you know, you could be doing two jobs or thinking about, uh, starting a business or making some kind of big investment. For some of you, this could be trying to make some kind of decision on a job or some kind of decision regarding a boss or an authority figure or something like that. But I do see you really wanting to work towards some kind of independence or some kind of financial independence. Um, you could also be working with somebody. I feel like a lot of this uh, Virgo has to do with your job, your money, your finances, and possibly for some of you relationships or financial relations with other people or relations involving shared resources in some way. 
um, I think is going to be a big focus uh, for this month. So let's go ahead and move on to your astrology for this one. So for uh, this month, we have, like I said, a lot going on in Libra, which is your second house of money, resources, finances, uh, anything that supports you, your priorities. And that could be another really big thing that you notice this month is your priorities, um, also possessions. So in the beginning of the month, it could be a little bit crazy with this Libra new moon conjunct Mars. Um, you know, Pluto goes direct that same day. So there could be some intensity going on with these themes that I've named off, you know, especially in terms of children or, uh, you know, things that you want or things that you feel you need for work or things that you want for work, things that you want for uh, some kind of satisfaction, you know, there may be possible uh, things that come up that challenge that in some way regarding resources and finances. So you want to watch out for that the very beginning of the month with that Libra new moon, but I am doing a separate video on that for all signs. So then we have Venus moving into your fourth house around the seventh where it will start conjuncting the south node there. So there could be some past things that come up in terms of family, home, relationships, watch out around that time. Then on the 9th, we have a Mercury Kazemi. There could be some kind of conversation, communication coming to light, um, or some kind of light bulb moment about finances, some kind of realizations, or rethinking something or a previous decision made about money or finances or income in some way. Then on the 10th, we have Saturn direct in the sign of Aquarius. So um, if you've been reflecting on your job or your day-to-day -day work, your, your health, there could be some forward shifts happening in that department not long after Saturn goes direct on the 10th. Uh, then from the 13th to the 22nd, we have the Sun and Mars taking turns squaring Pluto and Capricorn from your second house. So basically second, fifth house squares. There could be some stuff that comes up around that time to do with money and children or to do with finances, money, resources, priorities, versus some things going on uh, in your house of fun, love, romance, uh, but with Capricorn there, it could involve some conditioning or some work that needs to be done, um, sexuality, you know, things like that. And so but we'll talk more about this as we go through the new and full moon videos. So then on the 18th, we have Mercury and Jupiter going direct. That could be a time where you are maybe starting to feel a little bit more optimistic, um, especially in terms of your resources, your financial situation, et cetera. Um, and then Jupiter is going direct in Aquarius in your sixth house where you are maybe also starting to feel a little bit more optimistic or um, feeling a little bit more of forward shifts regarding your work, your health and things like that if you've been really kind of working on those things for a while. So then we have a full moon in Aries on the 20th, which is going to bring up even more financial matters for you, but we'll talk about that in the Aries full moon video or financial matters involving a partner. And then on the 22nd to the 26th, we have Venus squaring Neptune from your fourth to your uh, seventh house, which is going to be a really big deal. Could be some time where... Uh, some fantasy regarding relationships gets brought up for you or relationships from the past or where you may be breaking out of some kind of illusion about uh, a relationship or family or people from the past um, as well. And then from the 23rd all the way until basically the first week or two of November, we have the Sun and Mars starting to square, um, well, taking turns squaring Saturn in Aquarius in your sixth house at your sixth house from your third house sorry uh, this may bring up some stuff going on with work communications with work certain uh, rules or ethics uh, in your job versus community neighborhood uh, you know transportation uh, communication um, you know things like this so you want to watch out that around that time uh, Virgo, towards the end of the month, you could 
there could be some stuff that comes up that gets exposed or some restrictions that happen around that time but that could be possibly a little bit challenging but we'll talk about that more um, as it gets closer so anyways let me know down below Virgo if this reading ended up re resonating at all I would really love to know feel free to come back throughout the month and check in and uh, see what's going on if you need to and yeah thank you guys so much for watching that is the end of this video I truly truly appreciate your support and I will see you guys in my other videos.